Kwanza presents SCP. The Steve Dangle Podcast with your hosts, Steve Dangle and Adam Wild. Guys, it's our last show before Santa Claus. Before Xmas? Before Xmas. Who is that? Before Sinterklaas. Before Sinterklaas? Sinterklaas. I believe that's the Dutch one. That's the Dutch version. <laughs> Pero I, have, well. I have no idea. Krampus. Tomorrow is uh, Krampus is the evil one. Yeah, Krampus Tomorrow's is evil. Festivus. It Tomorrow is. is Festivus. Yeah. yeah. It's a good time. And it's not over until someone pins me. <laughs> <laughs> and I just watched, in time. I watched ju- a bit of that. And first. just in time for Christmas, our boy. Alex DeBrincat, a.k.a. Brindicat, mm. was released from the Team USA roster. Alex DeBrincat. <laughs> oh! Oh, my God! Oh! Oh my God give, you, give me a high five. Don't you leave me hanging. We're not. <laughs> wow! I mean, congrats. You're, you're all listening to the shortest ever episode wow, of the Steve Pocket. We're done. Speaking like, of George, just leave. Leave, leave man. I'm done. done. There you go. I'm done. There Damn, you go. Done. Jesse. It's over. He's gone. We'll miss you, <laughs> Jesse. And Logan Christmas. Brown was cut, too. But Alex DeBrincat <laughs> is kind of surprising. That's shocking. He's got 30 goals, 30 assists for 60 points in, what, 28 games? So here's what I was thinking. That's dumb. <laughs> I was thinking... That's, it's like he's playing in Junior A, but it's the OHL. Yeah, but what 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 team was he trying out for? <sighs> team Sweden. They're very deep. Nope. Uh, team Canada, also deep. Nope. Oh, it's Team USA. Yeah. And what do they hate? <laughs> Winning, apparently. Exactly. I don't get... Unless, so this makes complete sense. Unless it's in Saskatoon. Based on our, our actual... Uh, base, so, well, that but that was a different USA regime, right? That's now, true. Yeah, now it was USA a talented hockey. player scoring the overtime winner. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, I'm. So, I mean, given that, given what we know about their selection process, like I'm amazed Bracco made it. Oh, I don't think Adam liked his coffee. Oh no! Did you? Oh, there's no milk in it. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, man. Uh, I was like, I forgot. I took a sip. I was like, Bleh. Jesse, are you going to get milk? Oh, for- thanks. Yeah, because Jesse's done. Diva, Jesse's Adam. done. Sorry. <laughs> sure, yeah. Adam, has he spoken? No, he's done. He doesn't need. What does he need to do? What he can't. There's no other way that Jesse could come re himself back in this show and make it better for him. I'm mad I didn't come up with that. Me too. That's that's the ultimate uh, homage I can I can pay him. I'm mad I didn't come up with it. Alex to bring cut. I feel bad for him. I do too. I also feel bad for every opponent of the Erie Otters from now until the end of the World Juniors. Right. Because now you have a guy who like is mad should clearly be there. <laughs> like could have maybe even contended for Tell- like tournament MVP, <laughs> and, and he's not on the team. There must have been like t- USA Hockey is going to have to answer for this. They're going to have to have an answer. So what do you think their answer is? Well, see, if they win, no one cares. Yeah, but they're, even but if they medal, because even like you're they not going to win every year. Before they win, because they could get hot and they could win. I'm not saying the, I'm not saying this. This is the end for USA it's Hockey. Short tournament. I'm just saying. Here's the deal. You've got a, a guy who's scoring like he's scoring in the OHL. He's he's been unbelievable. Tell me, as a reporter, you're not asking how do you not have him on a roster? Yeah, I don't. Get I mean, it. the reporters are going to ask before they even play a game, and that I think is going to be very interesting to see how they answer that question. And I, it makes me wonder: was there a personnel? There has to be. It can't be skill. It can't be unless he's injured. Or there's a personality issue. There's it, it, skills not even in question. Here. Yeah. Well, in American listeners, maybe you can help me out a little bit more. But I think I read that the final and uh, final roster is announced Christmas Eve, which means he didn't even make final cut. Like, wow. He, he didn't even make final cut pro. I was just gonna. I was actually gonna drop see, that same one. Still, yeah, it's, it's not the it. brain no, cut. It's not the brain cut. It's not. No. It's not, well, we'll figure it out. We're going to spend the rest of our lives trying to <laughs> reach that level. Final man. Debrin cut. <laughs> Bro. Um, um, Mackenzie, who we shouldn't mention, did tweet <laughs> that. Um, Team USA said he didn't show well in either summer camp or the final selection. Camp. Yeah, you know where he but. did show well? <laughs> the Ontario <laughs> Hockey League. Yeah. Some players, oh. some players don't show well in practice. Mm-hmm. See that's but are just we, are we talking about practice? That's not even no, we're not we're I talking believe, about the game. I believe we're talking about the game. The upcoming games. But it's it's not just a slight on him. It's a slight on the entire OHL. Mm-hmm. This guy's one of the best in that league. And so you're just saying, you know what, we know better, those numbers don't matter. Uh what matters is our camps, our training camps. Or Steve, is the OHL 
over. It's over. It's the era of dominance over. It's done. It's a joke. It's a joke. It's, which isn't true at all. Because, no, I, because that's where the best players are playing. Let's, at that age. I, th- I think we should talk about who has made the team. Jeremy Bracco. Oh, yeah. Who oh. was cut last year. Mm-hmm. So the, maybe they're Bracco-ing to Brincat. I was gonna say I was gonna say uh, Sorelli, the captain of the Oshawa Generals, is on uh, Team Canada. Made the Generals as a walk-on. It's a great story. Great that, story. That is cool. Yeah, local he, made, kid. he made the Generals as a walk-on, and he's he's what on Team? Canada? Uh, he's on Team Canada. And he's he's captain the captain of the, of the Generals. Generals, and he scored the overtime winner to win the Memorial Cup a couple years That's ago. That's pretty amazing. Has he been drafted? L.A. Kings, I believe. Of course. I yeah, of course. <sighs> Damn it! Good little player. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I, we've we've heard really very very little about this year's World Juniors. From what I'm understanding, uh, I mean, this is the most I've heard. I, I, it, it just hasn't been a topic. Uh, but from what I'm hearing, because people actually give a damn about the Leafs again. Yeah, I think maybe that's what it is. <laughs> um, Canada is supposed to have an off year. Uh, jury's out on the U.S. Sweden's deep. Sweden's Russia. Deep. Don't know anything about Finland. Haven't heard anything about. You know what though? It's always it's sometimes it's quiet on the World Junior front until someone does something great, and that doesn't take very long at all. No. Um, and the Leafs, like I mentioned, don't have anyone on Team Canada, and often when they do, or there's a huge draft prospect on Team Canada, it gets some buzz. Mm. Um, but like you said, Bracco's on Team USA. Carl Grundstrom is on. Uh, uh, Team Sweden. Mm-hmm. I feel like they have a guy or two on Russia, but maybe I'm getting that wrong. Might be. There are Leafs there. Uh, Leaf prospect. Is it Kostelev? Might be on Kros- Russia. Kostelev. I'm not. I'm not 100 percent sure. Well, it's it is a uh, a good for Jeremy Bracco because he's been ripping it up. Uh, <laughs> maybe maybe they just were like, we need Bracco or Debrin Cat, and they went with Bracco's a Leaf, so he has to be picked. Yeah, maybe because we're we're. We, I mean, let's be honest. Toronto's what matters here. Why not just take the most skill? Steve, <laughs> don't apply logic to USA hockey. Yeah, you're just right. Just don't. I mean, come on. But if they win, if they win, if they win, got to shut up. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't matter if. It's cool they won't, but. Yeah. It's funny. Like, <laughs> I mean, they won't. I still. You, there's one way you can convince me acquiring Shea Weber's contract was a good idea, no matter how well he plays this season or next. Is that his winning, winning a cup? Yep, but if they do, shut up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, shut we, up forever. We shouldn't bring up PK and, yep. and that again. It was the right move. The yep. Caberle, the Caberle trade when the Leafs traded Caberle to the Bruins, the Leafs fleeced the Bruins. I thought they got a lot. They didn't do much with it, but that's besides the point. And Caberle wasn't a great contributor to the Bruins. I don't think. No, and um, he kind of fell off afterwards. He was he was good offensively for sure. You look at his offensive numbers. He did that. He couldn't defend his way out of a paper bag in front. Um, every single player on the Bruins played at least 10 minutes in Game 7 against Vancouver, except Thomas Caberle. I love that trivia question. They won the Cup. Mm-hmm. Who gives a damn? If you pay three first-rounders for a guy who ends up playing on your fourth line, but you win the Cup... You won the Cup. It's all done. You won if, I, if I told you the Leafs could win this Cup, uh, win the Cup this year, but they don't get a first-round pick until 2025. Win it. <laughs> if you told me the Leafs <laughs> traded Austin Matthews for Matt Stajan, and but they won the Cup, I would be like, okay. I'd, man, I would stop this conversation and go buy a Matt Stajan jersey. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly. Or go, or go rebuy everybody's old Matt Stajan jerseys because everybody got Matt St- Remember how popular would, Matt would, Stajan was? I would, he was so popular here. I would knock Austin Matthews out with my Stanley Cup popcorn maker and <laughs> smuggle him to Calgary in my trunk <laughs> if, if that meant getting the Stanley Cup. Move him right into Johnny Gaudreau's, Gaudreau's bedroom. Yes. <laughs> By absolutely. the way, they'd be filthy together. That would just be disgusting. Well, because they're they're just children at them. Yeah. They're children. Yeah, and they wouldn't you're right, they wouldn't clean up after this. I see what you did with the filthy. I meant on the ice, but Steve oh, meant in oh. the Steve meant they probably wouldn't do their own laundry, which is also valid. Well, Austin Matthews is a well kept man. He sure is. He Have you sure seen is. his hat? I I think those hats <laughs> Have were. Have you cool. seen his varnish hat? I think I think he he looks like the press did thirty years or oh, uh, yeah. in the nineteen thirties. <laughs> he looks like a real gum show. <laughs> that kid's gonna be a real star. <laughs> oh, I had a lot of fun with that. Um, JVR, we talked about sure. him. 
We talked about JVR in 30 Thoughts, or not in 30 Thoughts. Elliot talked about him in 30 Thoughts, but we talked about him last episode. Elliot is saying, and so we were we were speculating, Elliot is saying for sure. He also kind of speculated when he was on our show, by the way. He did. In his 30 Thoughts, like, his appearance on our show was kind of a tease for that little section. Right. Thought, Which, you know, is, that's is what I'm gonna tell beautiful myself. Elliot just weaving himself in. I've oh. heard him say, after our show, I heard him say on several other shows that the Leafs could really use an Oliver Ekman Larson. Oh, Right? Wow. And I saw him do say it on Tim and Sid as well. So now, I think... Do you know I, he said it here first? Jesse, clearly we have the exclusive. Okay. If Elliot Friedman's Listen. going anywhere with his content, it's clearly not to national television mm. or radio. It's clearly here. And if okay. 2016 has taught me anything, that doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's kind of true. Okay, regardless of what the truth is, I'm saying... <laughs> One thing, so it's that. We're in post-truth era, by the way. Oh. That's what they call it, post-truth. It really? That's what is they're that, calling it. Is that it. what they're calling it? Yeah. The alt-right is like, we are we live in a post-truth era, which oh means dear. we're should aligned we to each other. Should we ban the word alt-right? Yes, we should. Yes. <laughs> we should probably ban the, You're not alt-right, you're just a bunch of racists. Stop it. Yeah. But anyway. <laughs> you're not a thing. It's not that I'm racist, it's just that I don't like brown people. Well, <laughs> well you, that makes you racist. <laughs> Sorry. Did you? Okay. Like, wait, what? A little bit off top, we're getting off. I, I know you're like, so JVR. And then we got here yeah. within about 30 seconds. You know, one of my favorite things on the internet is Scottish Twitter. Scottish Twitter is amazing. Yeah. Did you see when Scottish Twitter encountered the whatever we'll call those folks? The all right. Just yes. say it. Yeah. Uh, all right. Until we come up with a better name. Oh, sure. Racists. <laughs> anyway, what, what, what happened? I don't know. This all right guy just got in a Scottish Twitter person's face. And he's like, ah, oh, shut up. Go hug your Japanese cartoon pillow. <laughs> wow. Uh, wow. It was good. Scottish people. They know how to cut. They know how to bring to cut deep. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. I'm trying. I'm trying. Right. I can't. This no episode is going to be me trying to live up to Jesse Blake. So JVR, JVR. <laughs> JVR brought up in 30 Thoughts. And so last year, JVR was off the table. We we speculated. We talked last year. Would he be a guy the Leafs would trade at the trade deadline if the offer, offer came up? Smartly, they didn't. And now they're saying, yeah, well, if you're, if you're going to come to us with a proposal, be serious about it. Mm-hmm. and be willing to give up a lot. Because what you get with JVR is, especially right now, and probably around the draft when he would actually get moved, is a guy who makes $4.25 million, and if you are right there, you got a guy who can play on your top two lines, will probably play top line minutes, will play power play minutes, will get in front of the net, will do all the things that all, like, he is Don, JVR, the only thing that's holding him back from being Don Cherry's dream is that he's American. Like, he really is... He is every. He is the prototypical Don Cherry hockey player. He really is. He gets in front of the net. Stick is down. Tips, uh, grabs. Will fight. Will uh, will tussle. Will throw hits. Uh, back checks. Does everything right. Imagine JVR Taves, and it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I'm just saying it now. And by the way, I say I say the Don Cherry thing jokingly. I just want to say that. Yes, whatever. Listen, it doesn't matter how you meant it. It's it's just it's how people choose to take it. Absolutely, <laughs> we live in a post truth era, apparently. Um, so I saw. It's funny. So Friedman goes, "You're going to have to give up a lot." And then I think what was also mentioned was the Hall for Larson trade and how the compensation would be similar. To what the Oilers got for Hall, which was Adam Larson, who was not like very underrated storyline this year. Like if if Weber had been performing poorly, we would hear n- nothing. Only that we would hear only that. How has Adam Larson performed? Not well. He's not putting up a ton of points, and the Oilers aren't uh, winning like they were in the first month of the season. Had a crazy game against Arizona. Maybe we can talk about that a bit later. We have that next on the lineup, actually. And then I saw someone else point out, like, why would the Leafs do something like that? Don't they realize they got him in a deal of that nature? Someone was like, you know what? We could really use a defenseman. So who cares how good this forward is? We're going to acquire Luke Shen. I like, think that's a horrible trade. It was. And I think I think the difference now is that the Leafs know they've got to open up some lineup spots. They do. Especially on the wing. Now, so what the Oilers did... Steve just slapped himself in the face. I yes. hope that went through on the microphone. Probably did. Um, so what the Oilers did was they sacrificed up front to address a need. I hope the Leafs don't do the same thing. Because, like, let's say... 
let's say the compensation was Truba, which to be honest, I don't, I'm not sure is enough. You don't think Truba's enough for Jay Bear? Honestly? Truba's really good. Like really good. Let's say, okay, let's say it's that. I shouldn't say it's not enough. I could see that happening. Okay. I could, I would be glad if that happened. Is Truba as good? How as bad? <laughs> is Truba as good of a right-handed shot defenseman as JVR is as a winger? Well, that's a, that's a tough question to ask because you're right. It's apples and oranges for the defense. Hmm. What I will tell you is this, and here's what I'll say. you you got to look at how, how the Leafs could replace his goal scoring, right? Which I think is possible. So I think a they can. I don't think they can replace his net presence at at present. I don't think they've got. I don't think they've got a guy who's as refined. Yeah. JVR is right now in the prime of his career or just entering that. Right, he's 26, 27 years he's old. In. He's in. And he is about to. He's about to get paid big money in about a year and a half, which he deserves. There, if there's any player that I think deserves six, seven, eight, it's that guy. Uh, and we'll get it. I mean, I, I would I would give him Kyle Pozo money before I'd give Kyle Pozo eighty percent of the money that Kyle Pozo got. <laughs> well, and I and I, that's, that's an interesting comparable because I kept saying lad, Pozo might be a little closer to realistic. And I and I've got nothing against Kyle Pozo. I just think JVR is that good and has been on a really really bad team for a really really long time, and has always performed. And so when when you look at what he brings. There are going to be, you're going to have to adjust the way you play when he's out there mm-hmm. or w- without him out there, right? But if you, okay, so you lose out on potentially this year, 30 goals, right? He might hit 30 goals this year. What are you getting in a, in a defenseman like Jacob Trouba? Well, you're going to get, what, a 10, 12 goals, 30, 40 points, and you're going to lock down that defensive core. Plus you've got, how, who, who do we got? But he's in, up the, in a couple of years. Or what? What? What's, it's a what's two year deal. new new deal, Jesse? It's three point one five one two five over two years. So each year is three point one two five. So you get him an extra year. Him. Gonna have to pay him. I, you have JVR this year and next. Right? No, but Truba. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It's the same same length. Yeah, Truba. Um, his cap hit. Now this is confusing. It says his cap hit is three point three oh eight this year. Oh, and two point eight. Next year. How does that work? That's what his cap hit is, or that's what his actual payment is? It says cap hit. Oh, that's weird. I don't know how that works. NHL salary this year is 2.5. Next year is 3.5. How the heck does that work? Okay. I got the wrong number. Sorry. Anyway. Um, so it's three each? That's very confusing. No, okay. Sorry. I just said Truba to say Truba. Okay. Um, let's pretend. Okay. Ignore all facts. Let's just pretend Truba is... S- 75% of the player JVRs at a different position. Mm-hmm. Does that improve the Leafs? That they their <sighs> defense is now better. It's undeniably better. But their offense is it took a big hit. Huge hit. Do you do you are, are you measuring this in terms of this season? Or? I'm measuring it in terms of success. Like I'm I'm measuring this it in, season? Uh next. 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 I think I think do I I don't think JVR is directly replaceable, but I think the Leafs know that. Mm-hmm. Um, however, however, I'll say this: I do think they've got young wingers who are going to be able to come up. I don't. I want to see what they have in a guy like Jeremy Bracco, and I'm see, I'm serious about him. He is. Yeah. What like, if they got? What if they got another Marner out of him? Not or maybe not Marner level, but maybe he steps in and he's able to play. Or maybe they get another Connor Brown out of him. This is the thing; like it's it's a complete change of style. JVR is, I think, six three two twenty five. Like that's a big player, uh, nasty in front of the net, can play with an edge, can drive. Leipzig is a feisty guy, but he's like five nine, five ten. Bracco in today's it, NHL. Does that sort of thing matter as much? Like Leipzig is the guy you'd think would step in, and boy, he it would, I would be like assume. Marner, Marner, Bozak, Leipzig. You imagine like the mosquito line. Whee! Yeah, it would be amazing. Now, I suppose if you're all playing one way, you know, you got some uniformity to it. That's good, but like you, the Leafs don't have. So let's let's say the Leafs trade JVR and they don't get a f- winger in return. You're looking at a change of ideology. You're looking at a change of style completely because they don't at present time have someone in their organization who can even 
be the type of player JVR is, let alone the quality of that type of player. Like I'm trying to think of who would be closest to him. There's no no big bag big bad meanies in the. Uh, Not that JVR's a big bad meanie, but he's but big. He's big. Can be. Um, Reichel is a little bit bigger, but he doesn't uh, project like JVR did. Andreas Johnson's an interesting thought. Like this is another one. So uh, all I've been talking about. It's funny. I get tweets all the time from people who aren't even Leaf fans going, man, like, or like they live in an AHL town and they're like, I, I went to see the Marlies play and I feel like I know more about them than my team because of the podcast. <laughs> yeah, we talked about Because we them talk about them every show. Um, this would be another fascinating season to have happen, uh, what happened last year, where they just go, well, let's see what you got. And they, and they just give everyone like a five game audition. Let's see what you got. Why not? Andreas Johnson, here we go. Why wouldn't you? Tobias Lindbergh, here we go. Well, even if they sell this year, they're not going to really have spots. Mm-hmm. Last year, see, it was so easy. Last year was obvious what was happening. And every it's step not from now. here is going to get harder. Yeah. Um, one thing I will say. I, okay, so Man. I talked to I talked to uh, Andrew Berkshire the other day, and Steve, you've you've talked to him too about about you know the numbers that uh, that he's been looking at, and essentially he thinks the Leafs are going to have a really big second half. Yeah, and he, by the way, like. That's a friend of mine, and he keeps those numbers close to his chest. Yeah, so I, he, he showed me a couple things, but really not much, and no, nothing to do with the Leafs. Really, I ask him not to. Sh- well, I I don't ask for the numbers. I just ask his opinion because I know he's looking at the numbers. So yeah. his opinion is this: because he's looking at then they tri- and it's oh, course you course no. He they look at like puck battles and stats that you simply can't access online. Right. Um, yeah, I don't know listen, how they score them, but they do it. But uh, like he he keeps stats that like you can't find on Corsica. Which is a really good site. Um, I, I, so many stats, like I haven't even seen anywhere else. He thinks the the worst or the the only thing the Leafs would need to do is a an upgrade, any sort of upgrade at the five spot on defense. Okay. So third pairing, any upgrade would be significant. He said yes. all you need to do is get a positive Corsi player in there. Uh, and he mentioned, and I forget who possession it was, player. Uh, possession okay. player. So who is the who's the who's on the second? Uh, he gave me an. I'm going to look this up. He gave what me team? a name. Montreal third line D. Not, um, not Petrie. No, not not Emelin. Not uh, Beaulieu. He not said Weber. Greg Paterin. Oh my God! By the way, you who know Montreal who drafted, doesn't like. You know who drafted him? The Leafs. The Leafs draft drafted Greg Paterin. Sit down and let me tell you a story. Oh, man. Here we go. Uh, In 2000, I want to say 10, the Leafs drafted Greg Paterin in the fifth round. It was like the next day or later that day or maybe two days later, something like that. uh, The Leafs and Canadians make a deal. The Leafs send a second round pick, which Montreal later traded for Robert Lang, uh, and Greg Paterin. The Leafs in return got Mikhail Grabowski. Your favorite, first favorite player, your first love. <laughs> yes. Ah. Ah. It, that is a, and that's days. a right-handed shot, by the way. That so, is, uh, Greg Paterin, and he said... Uh, but it's the Habs. Like, he said, guys like Greg Paterin can solidify a bottom pairing. Montreal doesn't like him, though. That's so weird, because I thought they did. That's it what, changes l- with the weather. <laughs> with the Habs. No, Montreal's winning, so whatever. <laughs> They're winning. Uh, I, I think it's interesting that, that that's the case. Because, you know, your instinct is to go NHL seven, 17 on everybody. And be like, I am going to make a huge blockbuster yeah. deal to make this team Woo! better. Yeah. But you don't necessarily need to. And the Leafs don't necessarily need to move JVR. And if they decided to, they could go all the way to the end of next year. And if they upgraded with a name like Greg Paterin or something else uh, along Greg Paterin's lines where, you know, you've got, let's say next year you get Andrew Nielsen coming up mm-hmm. and then you've got a Greg Paterin and all of a sudden your defense stabilizes. You've got Nikita Zaitsev with a year under his belt. Connor Carrick's that much more confident. Um, then all of a sudden you've got a team that still has JVR and is scoring the lights out like they have been doing. Um, I think it's I think it's pretty interesting. I'm interested to so we keep mentioning the wingers because I guess they're easiest. I want to see what people, what other folks on defense can do. Which again, like I just I know is not going to happen because there's evidence of that, Frank Arado. Um, but I'm trying to think of like I don't know what Renat Valiev can do at the NHL level. Do you? 
No. And they don't keep a lot of the same stats. I'm sure the Leafs keep the stats, but they don't keep they don't make those stats available in the AHL the, the way that we would get them here. And that's part of the problem. It's tough to scout guys when you don't know these things about them. Yeah, I haven't really looked into it much recently. No, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm trying to find Renat Valley of stats, but like, there's it was such a small sample size from last year. I'm trying to think of who that player could be, and do they already have them? Because they might. Is what I'm trying to figure it out. Is it that hard to get a Greg Paterin? I think so. I think defense are at such a premium. What about a Jared Spurgeon? Man, I don't even remember who he plays for. Islanders now? Or I thought it was, Mini? I thought it was the Kings. Not anymore? No. I don't think mm, I don't think Spurgeon but ever played for the Kings. Oh, okay. <laughs> sorry. Why do I have him? <sighs> again, again, this is why the fantasy draft, or not the fantasy draft, I keep calling it that. Expansion. The expansion draft is so interesting to me. Ah, there's some moves. It's going to happen. I, I, I think, let me, let me ask the listener something. Is this getting exhausting? Every show, I try to wrap my head around what the Leafs are doing for 20 minutes, come up with nothing, and then we move on. To me, they are a fascinating team. They are. And I think people are right there with us because everybody wants to try to understand what's happening here, and nobody could quite get a handle at it. And that is, that's not just us. That's everybody. Hmm. Like, I, I, Chris Johnson, never seen a team behave like this. Elliot, never seen a team behave like this. We don't know. And by the way, um, Byron Fraze called up. Yes. And he'll be in the lineup uh, against Colorado. Now, they said he had a bad audition last year, or at least that's what I've been reading. And from what I saw, he didn't look all that bad on the team. In fact, he was one of the, I thought he was, I thought he played perfectly fine. He didn't look any worse than Ben Smith currently does. And I, I hate picking on Ben Smith. I really do. I think that much is obvious because everyone loves dumping on this guy. Man, I was I was trying to talk to someone about this the other day. So I, I think I think it was Jeff Fayette posted Ben Smith's uh, possession stats, or no, every player on the team's stats. Jesse, maybe you can look through his timeline. Um, every player on the Leafs with and without stats with Ben Smith. Right, he's ob- The stats suggest he's an anchor, like a boat anchor. Um, and an anger for everybody else too. Yes. Everybody that plays with him suffers. And so yes, he can take faceoffs. Yes, he can kill penalties. But just a boat anchor. But like, I watch all the games on TV. I was at the Leaf game the other day. I'm watching Roman Polak. I can tell you exactly what Roman Polak does that I don't like. I'm watching Matt Hunwick, and I can tell you exactly what Matt Hunwick does that I don't like. Like Polak, the stats suggest uh, Hunwick is better than Polak, but like. Polak, I, I know he's slow. I know he's big and slow, but I know what he's going to do. And he's relatively predictable. I never know which way Hunwick's going. I never know which way he's going. I never know who he's going to protect. I never know. I have no idea. Like, he's the Tasmanian devil out there. I can tell you what I don't like about both of their games. I look at Ben Smith. I don't know what he's doing wrong. Like, I don't know what he's doing that's causing those numbers. Or mm-hmm. is it something with how he's being deployed? Well, I think... I think- I'd like to have a look at where he's deployed, but he is not. I, and, it's got to no, be in the defensive zone. It, always, I think it is. I think it's always in the defensive zone because who's going to b- deploy Ben Smith in the offensive zone? You're not putting – when you've got three li- three top lines like they do and you've got Matthews, Kadri, and Bozak to draw, draw up on, you're not putting Ben Smith in an offensive situation. By you're the way, not. <laughs> Babcock, Babcock is very smart because what was such a point of contention in Randy Carlisle's tenure with the Leafs is who was playing on the top line. Uh, and Babcock combated that by not having one. <laughs> Who's the Leafs' top line? I suppose it's Kadri's, but no. Not really. Not Kadri, Komarov, Soshnikov, that's not your top line. It's got a purpose. It's not your top line. Oh, okay, well, it's JVR, Bozak, Marner. No. Sometimes. Sometimes. It's your top offensive line, Against probably. Anaheim, it was most definitely Austin Matthews' line. Austin Matthews, Hyman, and whoever's there this week. Probably Nylander. Uh, no, Nylander's on the fourth line. Well, as of practice yesterday. Right. Yeah, uh, we'll see about that. The fourth line, I believe, is Matt Martin, Byron Fraze, William Nylander. <laughs> Which then doesn't make it a fourth yeah. line. Which, it doesn't. It doesn't matter. I have to, uh, yeah, you can change that one shift into the game. <laughs> exactly. Which Bab- Babcock has been doing, by the way. And people have kind of been ignoring that a little bit. Well, I think you focus too much on where people are starting rather than what their time on ice was. Well, because where they're starting is in print. Yes. 
And then yeah. you got to really pay attention and go, wait a sec, who's on the ice with who? And it's it's great how much Leaf fans uh, do pay attention, though, because I was at the game the other day, and they briefly, I think it was JVR Kadri Marner, which I think might be the top line against Colorado, or at least that's what they were trying in practice. But they didn't head into the game with that, and I met fans at intermission, and they were all like, oh, did you see JVR Kadri Marner? Oh, that's so fun. That's pretty cool. Oh, so Kadri's probably like, oh, <laughs> finally. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> they let him They let him play with JVR once a year. It's like Christmas. Yeah. Now, <laughs> at Christmas, thankfully. Yeah, at Christmas. Uh, now, we got to take a quick break on Sportsnet 590 The Fan. Jesse, did you have something you want to quickly bring up, or are we good? No. Okay, cool. Did you find that thing? I think I went back too far. And I passed. No, it. we're going to talk. Okay. Uh, we're going to talk about the. You tweet too much, Jeff. We're going to talk about the Coyotes Oilers game uh, a little bit. Plus, what uh, what happens? What's happening in Tampa? Which is an underrated story. It's tragic though. And what Pat Brisson, <gasps> Super Agent Pat Brisson, had to say about the NHL at the Olympics when we come back on Sportsnet 590, the fan. It's funny, you know, the difference that twelve months can make. You know, because 12 months relatively is not a very long time. It's a year. In the a trip NH- around the sun. In the NHL, it is an eternity. And if you were to tell me that Zach Cassian was still playing in the NHL at Christmas last year, I might have been like, really? Oh, okay. Sort of surprised by that. Okay. Here's here's how, how long a period of time is in the NHL. You know when Carlisle got fired? Yeah. Like, do you remember when that was? Uh, it was late January, wasn't it? What year? 2014? 2015. It was 2015? Yeah. Wow. You know, it's only 2016 right now. <laughs> yeah. Are you sure it's 2015? 100% sure. It was less than two years ago. Wow. Oh. Doesn't that feel like five years Are ago? Are you sure? Are you sure? I don't I, think so. Can yep. we look that up? Uh, January On 5th, 2015. January 6th. Ah! 2015. Randy Carlisle Whoa! Was fired. We haven't even reached the two-year anniversary. Haven't even reached the two-year anniversary. Look at the team. Wow. Wow. Right? That's that's so if your team is down and out, it can be turned around in a pretty short amount well, of time. Well, is 26th place turned around? Yeah. And this it's is true. Argument. Yes, it is because 30th is not next to the Leafs. <laughs> you know what? So, yes, it is. That's an interesting question, Jesse, because a lot of people ask that. Look at how people talk about the Leafs. Now, look at how people talk about the Avalanche, uh-huh. who are a team in a very similar position. Beat the Leafs earlier this season, might beat them again tonight. Who knows? But just look at how people are talking about Colorado and look how people talk about Toronto. Mm-hmm. One is filled with hope. You know, heartbreaking losses. Ah, and the other is like, man, I heard on the radio today. I think it was Renaud Lavoie saying that he thinks the Colorado Avalanche should like call up Patrick Waugh and beg for forgiveness and bring him back. <laughs> well, that's a little. Far. And Nathan McKinnon is a shell it's not, of a player. It's not and like Patrick Waugh was a great coach. He's Sorry. not playing with passion. You and this is the other thing, though, because it's currently not working out. Therefore, Waugh should still be coaching. He's the answer to all the problems. No, he's not. Why can't what, they just, would have made the playoffs last year? Why can't there just be two bad options? If the Leafs <laughs> lose to Colorado and Arizona within a week, yeah. then we all panic. No. And again, it depends how. If they get blown out, yeah, I'm, I'm a little concerned. I don't think they will, though. Um, and I just don't. I don't think so. I think you look at their underlying numbers. There's no way that you could. You could panic. You just would not be reasonably looking at the situation. They're, they are out shooting every opponent double. There is no way this continues. Yeah. I'm sorry, it just doesn't. A little luck on their side, and, and things are going to change now. So, Well, here, here, sorry. I, I want to give you a couple things here. So, one, this is encouraging. Frederick Anderson is 2-1-2 two, and two in his last five starts with a 9-4-4 save percentage. The Leafs have scored just 12 goals during that span. So that's... You know, we've been talking about how good the Leafs goal scoring is. Freddie's been living up to expectations, I'd say exceeding them. Uh, Boy, do I regret that that, uh, Bernier trade, though. Oh, yeah. We really missed out on the guy there. Now, now this is the one I wanted to talk about. Six of Toronto's last eight games have been decided by one goal. The Leafs are one, two, and three over that stretch with 13 goals scored. They're in there! They just got to learn how to be in there. That's the thing. Killing me. That's a learned skill. Now, let's talk about Zach Cassian. Yes, let's who, do 12 it. months ago, again, you wouldn't expect him to be 
not only an NHL player, but a useful NHL player. It looked like... What a nut. <laughs> it looked like his career was over. <laughs> yes, it did. And you know what? Uh, not, a, not a lot of people like him or his, his style or... You know, a lot of Oilers fans don't think he's the greatest player, but like you do have to admire um, the ability to come back. You know what I mean? He listen. He deserved to sit out for a while. He did. He did some naughty things. Huh. Um, but, but it's it's great that he's playing again. Do people deserve second chances? And I think so. I'm of the belief that they do. Um, I'll, I'll give in you most, an in most instances, anyway. I'll give you an example. You, you know who no one really talks about at all. Because of, and he did do a naughty thing. And we all yelled and screamed about it last year. Ryan O'Reilly. Mm-hmm. He's having a great season. Um, we probably would have called him a, uh, what did he get nominated for and everyone freaked out? Uh, Masterton? Masterton. Maybe not Masterton, but we probably would have called him like a, like a, a perennial Lady Bing candidate. You know, maybe future Selkie candidate. Having a great season, but we're not allowed to talk about him anymore. We're not allowed to mention the good things he well, did before the bad thing, and now after the bad we thing. We can't, but we can't do that. We can't do that. What do you mean? I, I, can't I, I do think, which one? Well, we 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 can't. We can't. As I've always said, we cannot not allow people to try to make a comeback, right? Yeah. And that's the thing is that there, the, the internet age is like, well, but bad thing. I think you can take it away from some people. I I'm not. So. I'm not certain yes. O'Reilly and Cassian are those two people. Sure, and that's my point: is yeah. that there are there are um, malicious things that you can't. There's a line you can't cross. There, yeah. you all know what I'm talking about. And then there's lines where it's like, okay, that was really stupid, mm-hmm. really stupid, mm-hmm. and you deserve the punishment that you got. And if you don't turn it around, then you'll be written off forever. And yes, you'll always have to live with it. However, you do need a you need to allow time and space for people to come back. It's like when it's like when someone in your life does something really stupid. I know in my relationship, I have done some stupid things. My fiance has graciously allowed me to come back from those stupid things <laughs> and prove that those stupid things are not characteristic of who I normally am. He got her the wrong makeup bag. <sighs> It's terrible. Uh, so, are we about to praise Cassian for um, punching Anthony Duclair in the face? I think I think I'd like to <laughs> I'd like to give him the respect he deserves for not only maintaining a roster spot on the Edmonton Oilers, mm-hmm. who are a much better team, uh, but also playing useful minutes. Absolutely. And I if, listen, playing the role that is being asked of him. Exactly. Exactly. And I think that I think we can give him that. And you know. Uh, I think it depends on what school of hockey that you're from, whether or not, you know, it was, he cross-checked Oliver ekman Larson in the back. After Oliver ekman Larson laid a questionable hit on it was Matt a pretty, Hendricks. Not just questionable. It was pretty... Yeah. It was beyond question. Now, that was bad. And I love Oliver ekman Larson. All borderline hits that happen against your team are bad hits in the moment. Sure. You don't have the benefit of hindsight. You have the benefit of one and a half seconds to decide what you're going to do about it. Does it look kind of bad? Is it in the final minute of a game, or is it very late in the game uh, of a game that we're winning? Okay, I'm doing something about this. And I'm going to do it with authority. Okay, now I've done it. Someone's going to come after me. Throws his gloves away like it's nothing. Duclair comes in like clockwork, and he got his clock cleaned. I mean, yeah, okay, so Jesse's showing it right here. I mean, this is not a good hit on no. Is it Hendrix, right? Yeah, I mean... And then, yeah. Oh, it is in the final minute, too. Legal? Yeah, I'd say that's probably legal, but like you don't know that in the moment. And then and Doan, Shane Doan, going Doan after comes him after him. This, this was a terribly officiated game. Did you watch the highlights from I, this thing? I uh, I did, but it, the, officiated, the, the way it was officiated was not really kind of put across in the highlights. Okay, that's true. Which... Because I know you were watching last night, and I had to go to bed. That annoys me. Okay, and again, I'm going to get on my high horse about highlights because I used to do them. You follow the story of the game. You don't just go, this guy scored, and then this guy scored, and then this guy scored. Steve, if there's a bunch of fights, show the fights. That's the story, Steve. The story is the f- is the no, nastiness. You're right. you're right. I just wanted I wanted to give Zach Cassian his because okay. he deserves it. So did Shane Doan. <laughs> and Mark Letestu as well. What did Letestu do? I'm he trying fought. to remember. It, oh, is, is he one of the guys in that melee? I think he fought. So, well, I, think I didn't it was watch earlier. this game live, obviously, but everything got out of hand. Um, and so <laughs> people kept posting GIFs and little videos of all the dirty things from the game and all the uncalled things. Like, just what a mess. 
one of the worst messes I've watched this season. Yeah, the Griba hit on Chikrin. Yeah. I don't know. It was kind of fast. Luke, boy, Luke Shen is still a terrible fighter, eh? <laughs> yeah. Man. Hey, they're playing him with Oliver Ekman Larson. And boy, Are they? boy do Coyotes fans. Are they actually? Oh, yeah. It's good for Luke. I didn't even notice And that. bad for Coyotes fans. Damn. They hate it. They hate it. it good no for sense. Luke, though. Uh, boy, no. he's still. God love him. God, is he bleeding again? He is bleeding again. So, okay, so I got the opportunity to interview him a bunch of times a few years ago because uh, he was with Nike and I was doing interviews for Nike. So, oh, did you work for Nike? I did a little bit. I got some free stuff. You might did have you? heard about it. Yeah. Get out. Does uh, Steve like Scottish Twitter? <laughs> <laughs> oh! Man, you guys aren't going to believe this thing. It's called Scottish Twitter. Uh, what what happens? And then what? People tweet in Scottish. I'm, I'm just going to go, hold on, I'm going to sit on the ground, cross my legs, and put my hand on my on my fist. How about you leave the room? Story time with Steve. <laughs> <laughs> so Luke Shen told me. What did Luke tell you? He got a bad stitch job on the bridge of his nose oh. when he was with the Kelowna Rockets. Um, and now, like, all you got to do is, like, basically, yeah, give him a face wash and it'll open up. So oh. every time he gets into a fight, he's bleeding from that spot. Every single oh. time. He's yeah. like Wolverine. Kind of. Wow. Without the healing. He's like Wolverine without the fighting skill at all. <laughs> um, but like, it, there, were, there were some hits that maybe should have been called um, on Chikrin. I'm kind of surprised he was allowed to return to the game. There were at least two missed penalties. Um, if, okay, if the infractions Chikrin, against McDavid, like it was, it was a terribly efficient was, game. Was the Chikrin hit? Was was the concussion protocol enacted? I don't think so. Now again, I didn't watch the thing because I looked at that. It was I, hard to. It's hard to catch up because I, I looked at that hit and I thought if that was Connor McDavid, they absolutely would have enacted the concussion protocol. Oh, and Cassian would have left the bench. <laughs> Cassian would have left the bench. Um, moving on here. Yes. One of the things that we talked about going into the season, a lot of people, you know, in every sort of media circle, predictions, predictions, predictions. What are your predictions? Who do you think is going to be at the top of the league? Because everybody's excited, right? And every time we say a team with the asterisks of what? A team with the asterisks. Well, uh, okay. So you, if you pick a team to be top of the league, yes. What's the asterisks on that? Injuries. The, Ah, uh, <coughs> bingo. Which brings me to the Tampa Bay Lightning. There it is. All right. So Ben Bishop. Who Boy, I, I looked at them. I looked at their roster the other day and I went, oh, that is not nearly as threatening. <laughs> well, yeah. All you got to do is take out one of the best goal scorers in the league. Ben Bishop has not had a great year. He's nine and ten. Uh, See, that's just his record, though. Mm-hmm. Has he been stopping pucks? Well, that's I was I at the game. I was at a game and he could not stop pucks. No, I, he's not had a good that was year. One game, though. Mm, yeah, uh, ask Lightning fan. All the Lightning fans at the all the Lightning fans at the game were like, "We are done with this guy." Oh wow, really? Eh? Um, now that is just fans. Maybe he's the writing on the wall. But here we go. Mm-hmm. Ben Bishop, whose contract is up by the way at the end of the season, is out a month. Steven Samkos gone. Ryan Callahan gone. Nikita Kucherov, this is new too. Gone. Andre Palat gone. Oh all my injured. god, that's like their entire top six. Who's the Alex Kalorn? <laughs> Tyler Johnson. And Tyler Johnson. See, that's so if you're wondering why Tampa maybe is not performing at the level that we thought they could, mm. it's because they don't have half their team. But why aren't the Panthers good still? It's clearly all the circus bull crap. Well, okay, that might be a factor, but. You're bringing up the Panthers again. I'm just bringing up Huberto. No, look, people are going to look at Tampa and go, you know what? Benefit of the doubt. Florida's going to get none of that. Any team. That's true. A hundred percent. That's really true. But buddy, I predicted this the day Galan got fired. Like, forget all this other stuff. The day he got fired, the Panthers are not going to get uh, an inch of slack. None. But Tampa, poor guys, and they're down the street. <laughs> interesting. Really interesting. It's not interesting. We know what it is. Is people are mad at the Panthers. And going into this season, those I think they and were. And you shan't speak ill of C.V. Eisenman. They were one of the. They were one of the darlings. I think the Panthers going into this season, people were really excited about them because they were cute. Yeah, they broke hearts. They broke hearts. Like a lot of people like to think, oh, professionalism and all that, grizzled vet, pro, unbiased. No, no, everyone has their favorites. Every For single sure. person going into this season, the Panthers were one of mine. I really thought that they were going to take it to the next level. It doesn't mean they won't. Doesn't mean they won't next year. Doesn't mean they can't this year. I'm just saying, pff, 
did not see this coming. I'll give no you an example. way did you see, could anybody have seen Gerard Gallant getting fired? You, you know who, who the honeymoon is over for a little bit? The Dallas Stars. Yeah. Everyone thought they were so cute. And Look at you with your goals. And, and your Jamie goals. Ben and Tyler Sagan, and they tandem. got all this offense, and they're really fast, and they're fun to watch. Dallas Stars games were some of my favorite to watch for years. Um, and then it's another year of talking about how their defense sucks and their goaltending, and their sucks. goaltending is even worse. I'm, I'm bored. <laughs> Elliot Friedman brought up <laughs> in, in, uh, in 30 Thoughts that Rutherford loves to make his moves early. And, I mean, he's got a team poised to go all the way. If you're him. Columbus and Pittsburgh coming up, by the way. Yeah. If you're him, do you trade Marc-Andre Fleury and add a piece even though you're right up against the cap, Mark Andre Fleury gives you five million dollars flex room as he walks out the doors. I think it's five point three five or something like that. That sounds about right. Five and a half, we'll say. We'll round it up. Um, so then you can add a piece. The problem is, who are you getting from de- on defense from Dallas? I don't know if it has to be f- on defense. I think well, you kind of just get what you get. Um, uh, it's because who's their top defense? Pittsburgh. Uh, why am I not? Letang. Is out. Is out, yeah. Dallas can't afford to do that. They can't. So so here's the thing, though. If you're Rutherford, do you really trade Marc-Andre Fleury when you can repeat? I look at the Pittsburgh Penguins. And they just just risk losing him? Well, I would. Because now (laughs) is the time. We've talked about this with, with Bishop. And like it even it makes even more sense with Bishop because it, like he'd be a rental. Yeah, it's a no brainer to trade him. Uh, Flurry. I mean, shoot, it's the same thing. I mean, if you got a shot, go. And there's not a move out there that makes sense. And also keep in mind, like the players on the team love Flurry. Yes, they love him. He's a brother. Like he's deeply ingrained as part of that team. And also, let's also not rule out. Um, you know, let's say Matt Murray starts the first round and a half and then Matt Murray gets hurt. Mm-hmm. Boy, that's, you're glad that you got Mark andre Fleury. That's my point, right? A guy who's won the cup twice and but, been to the finals. You're also only paying one starting goaltender. Matt Murray makes like $600,000. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you're only paying one goalie. I, Murray makes less than backups. Yeah. He makes less than... So there's really no Is this cap hit less than Jonas Enroth? I think probably. Tell me it's not. I hope it is because that's hilarious. Look it up. That that would be unreal. I just I, I think uh, I you might have a great point there, Adam. Why I, trade him if you don't have a great? Well, oh yeah, sorry. So they love him. Let's say they move him at the deadline. Now you got this huge shift. New guy coming in. Not Wh- just new guy coming in. It's it's. I won't put the pressure on the new guy coming in, but it's who left. And there's and you're you're sad if you're Sidney Crosby. You're sad. Chris you Lassen, played with him for a decade. You want those people in their happy place. If you have a chance to repeat. I think maybe you just go for it. If you want to, if you want a little um, insight into Jim into Jim Rutherford and the way he thinks, read his Players Tribune article. Okay. Uh, with who did they they acquired? Why I can't. Benino? Uh, not Benino. Hagelin at the de- yeah Hagelin, and it was one of the Pittsburgh players who was best friends with Hagelin, who said, "I'm so glad we got him." And Hagelin came in and he was struggling and Hornquist? he. I think it was Hornquist. Yeah. I think it now, is. Sorry. So I but, did, but I did forget something. Oh, the point I'm going to make. Just read sure. it because it talks about, in Rutherford's eyes, how important the dressing room dynamic is. And it supports your point, Steve, about Flurry being a big part of that dressing room. Now, I did forget something very important to all of this. So the reason there's been uh, all of this about Murray and Flurry and all that. So Bishop, again, expiring contract. Easy. If you keep Flurry, you're probably going to lose Murray. If you're Vegas, why wouldn't you claim him? Well, why you have to you have to protect Flurry? You can only yeah, I you think can you can only protect one. one. Yeah. Well, and Flurry has a no move, right? Also, if you're Vegas, well, yeah, I get I don't know. Yeah, to he's me got that a no movement clause. To yeah, me, there you go. That is a problem. Yes, you might lose. You might, but here's what I would but say: But if you could win the cup, doesn't matter. Oh boy, and, and, and it's and, not a guarantee. It's though. not a guarantee. But do you not go for it? And What's what's to say Marc Andre Fleury at the end of the season, no matter how it ends, goes, All right, I will I will I will waive my no movement clause. I know it's his right. Where? Doesn't matter. You find a spot. Oh, he Somebody waves it so that they yeah, can protect Murray? Yeah, you don't have to make this decision until after the Stanley Cup Finals. You have that little you window that, where you can still trade Flurry if you want so to. So there's still some finagling. Exactly. Yeah. And Flurry's gonna wanna Flurry's they don't they they've admitted 
publicly that they're frust- it's frustrating for both goalies. Mm-hmm. So this is not something that Murray and Fleury want to continue. And I have a really hard time believing that Marc-Andre Fleury, as good of a, a guy as he is, would just go, no, you can't trade me. No. Get rid of that young kid. I don't think so. I just don't see it happening. Because then there would be... I wonder... You know what's going to be in interesting the is there's going to be a shadow over... I don't know how many guys, but probably a few... Because someone is not in that dressing room because they decided I don't want to go anywhere. I don't want to waive my no trade. Mm-hmm. And that's what you have to deal with when you're a Stanley Cup contender. It's good problem to have. <laughs> Who's the goalie of Las Vegas? Bishop or Flurry? Who's more likely? Why not both? <laughs> Yay! Like that <laughs> they'd they'd uh, like that. Cap room. I don't yep. think they're going to have a problem with cap room. I think that you're they're, not what's, their, goalies. what's available. They might have a problem with the cap floor. Yeah, what's available to them uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they got both of those guys although Ben Bishop's a, uh, a free agent so I don't think they're going to have mm-hmm. to worry about that I wouldn't be surprised and if I were them I would do it what the hell why not right if you, could, you get the best goaltending available they, if you look at what's available to them with what people are projected to give, a, give away it's not great Jesse, uh, can you look up, I think, I want to say Luke Fox wrote a Las Vegas roster prediction. And you can't and I think look it, it up right now up. because we have to go on Sports oh! 590 The Fan. You can listen to Luke Fox and and uh, all of his article things or look it up at sportsnet.ca. Um, uh, we'll, we'll talk about that in the download portion of this podcast. It's brought to you by Panago Pizza. It's what's on the inside that counts. Find us at sportsnet.ca or on iTunes or on SoundCloud or on Podstitcher or on whatever Android device you listen on. Uh, we're available everywhere. Thank you so much for listening. And Merry Christmas. Airware. Merry Christmas. Yes. So so we've got the article. Yes. Well, it's a video. It's a video, but we've got the, the actual screen grab. So what does the roster look like? Uh, Jesse, you want to read this? Sure. Right, there you go. So the goalies are Jimmy Howard, Philip Expensive. Grubauer, Cheap. Grubauer. Grubauer. And uh, Calvin Picard. Calvin Pickard from Colorado. Picard. Captain Picard. Picard. Uh, and they got Trevor Vance Reen- Reensdijk, Luke Shen, <sighs> Brendan Dillon, uh, Braden McNabb, Martin Marinson, Jonas Broden. Brodeen. Brodeen, That's sorry. Okay player. Joe Morrow, Brandon Davidson. I, I'm, I'm a little sad about TVR. I want TVR on the Leafs. The interesting thing about uh, this Vegas roster is none of the players are, like, bad. They're all fine. Let's go through the forwards here before we. Yeah, yeah sure, sure, sure. Um, Tyler Johnson. Whoa, that's that's a, that would be a, a huge coup. Jakob Silverberg. That's another good player. Wow. Seth Griffith. Well, yeah. Uh, Matthew <laughs> Perot. Yep, yeah, that's an player. okay player for uh, sure. Derek Dorsett. Dale Oops. Weiss. Derek Dorsett, by the way, has a huge injury uh, since this video was made. So, who knows? Uh, who was the next one? Dale, Dale Weiss. Weiss. Yeah. I find that very hard to believe. He's Lee, had a rough season. Lee Stepniak, huh? who is still playing, still playing and Good still Lord. decent. Uh, Yakupov, that's somebody. We'll see. We'll see. We got Bo Bennett and Matt Calvert. See, that's the thing. That's why I feel like they could easily afford another goalie. <laughs> yeah, they they really lack star power. They do. Mm. They really lack star that's power, but. Team. It's it's not it's not a good team. It's at all. not. But again, this is why I think if you're the Vegas GM, you go into the summer knowing it's going to be the worst summer of your entire life. It's going to be the busiest summer of your entire life. You draft all the best players you can. I don't care if you come up with 28 forwards and two defensemen and no goalies. You you glue the phone to your head. And you trade those players around the league. You do what you can do. Yep. You figure it out. Yep, because I, they're going to have cap room. Now, I don't think Mark andre Fleury is going to want to come in and compete for a starting job. He might not have a choice. But if you get Mark andre Fleury, if you can... I mean, that, what's interesting about that is it does not include Matt Murray or Mark andre Fleury. It doesn't include a lot of the players you'd think would be exposed. So what do you think the thinking behind that is? That they're well, just not going to make it is to that, the draft? Is well, that it? I don't know because because the thing is Pittsburgh would have to expose Matt Matt Murray if Mark Andre Fleury refused to waive. Right? There, they had an article. There oh no! Wait, where, he hasn't played three years. They don't have to. Matt, you have to have played three years, uh, isn't it? I don't know if that applies to goalie. I, it has to. Yeah. That, oh, that's it's all so confusing. So if it, yeah, because if that rule, which I, I swear it does, applies to goalies, the same, the Austin Matthews, yeah. the reason Austin Matthews doesn't need to be protected, same thing, then Pittsburgh's fine. 
What do they need to worry about? Hmm. We just spent 10 minutes trying to figure that out. That's People it. People are yelling and screaming yeah, at us. Yeah, that's it. Why would you ever... Why would you... Now you don't trade Marc-Andre Fleury. Forget it. I think you're only allowed to protect one goalie. Mm-hmm. But if Matt Murray's not, uh, not a guy that you have to put out there, if he's exempt, why do you worry about but it? Why doesn't every team just have a rookie backup then? But we're talking about the Penguins here. Yeah, I know, but like, um, all you got to do is have a rookie backup, and you're fine. Yeah, no, I don't. I, I'm telling you, I'm telling. Should you. we move on, <laughs> Steve? Because I don't know. Because I don't know the answer. Well, that no, it's clearly that's the answer. I don't think it is. How would that be different? Well, yeah, if you go to the expansion uh, mock tool on Cap Friendly, you can't um, protect Matt Murray because Flurry has the no movement. Yeah, but Matt Murray hasn't played the full. That's the the rookie exemption. Are you calling that? Cap friendly expansion draft tool wrong. I'm no, no uh, but he would be under like the exempt list, right? Yeah, so he's he not. wouldn't. How is Matt Murray not on the exempt list? It doesn't say specifically why, but he's not protected under your team. Okay, in the tool. Damn, if he was, <laughs> Pittsburgh's oh, it's laughing. easy. It's laughing. Easy. So easy. Okay. But, uh, well, thank you yeah. NHL for making this so bloody uncomplicated. <laughs> Good lord. Let's move on to Pat Brisson, shall we? Yes. Assuming this is his quote directly. Assuming the numbers are adding up. From the IOC to the NHL, as in paying for insurance, paying for travel expenses, that sort of thing. So teams and players are protected financially. I can only see great benefits for the growth of the game worldwide, especially with China and South Korea on the horizon. Isn't that what the mandate is? Is it furthering development world? Is the is the mandate he's saying is the is it furthering development worldwide? Furthering the development of worldwide interests. Franchise value can only benefit from financial growth. Batman and Fair have met, by the way, um, and they've got about five weeks to figure out whether or not the NHL and their players are going to the Olympics. I feel like the NHL does not care. In this particular Why? instance, I don't, I think it's a flawed train of thought, but the way they are, I think they've been kind of belligerent in this one. I think they've been throwing their weight around a little bit here because they know the players want to go and they're saying, well, what's in it for us? Well, what's in it for you is very obvious, but I think what they're trying to do, I think the NHL's goal in this, and it's a smart goal from the NHL's perspective, which everybody's going to be against. Everybody's going to hate this. They want that extension. They want that 2019 extension. They want yeah. the, they want to 2022. They want to push this thing that the, the length of its contract. There's one thing I've heard a couple times now is they might skip this Olympics, but and then they go come back. back. So it seems fairly obvious that what you just said is what they're trying to do. So Sidney Crosby in his prime will be will be robbed of the Olympics. Everybody in their prime, you know. It's I don't get it. I I I, I, I get it. I know what they're doing. You know what they're doing. Yeah, but like, why? So like, so let's say it's a mask they're putting on right now, right? So they want to go to the Olympics, but they're putting on this mask to get what they want. Do they cave? Because they do eventually want to go to the Olympics? Like, when do they finally go, okay, okay. When do they relent? I don't think that's a Gary Bettman thing. I don't think that's a thing he does. And I don't think Gary cares about public perception like i don't think he cares no. not one bit no the problem is gary bettman doesn't care about public perception of gary bettman gary bettman has to be concerned with public Stop perception of the nhl caring about gary bettman he's a dartboard he's the commissioner but he has to care about the nhl yes. and this will this no, what i'm saying it's not the will of gary bettman we need to worry about it's, it's the will of the owners right Right, and it's very clearly the will of the owners to, to, to push that, and I get that, but all of them need to be concerned about how this the NHL takes this, how the NHL logo, how the shield is damaged by this. Ah, the shield that comes up whenever a player is getting suspended? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it's important that, I think it's really important that they, they watch out for that. Eric Riva has been suspended for a hit on Jacob Chikrin. <laughs> I'm Patrick Burke. <laughs> Are you tired? Are you okay? Yeah, I'm a little tired. Yeah, because it feels like your energy in the last 10 minutes has just dropped it's right dropped. off. I know. What's happening here? This is gone. Jesse and I were talking like I, I haven't been sleeping and he hasn't been sleeping. And What's going on with you two? Let's I'm, talk I'm about restless it. heading up to Christmas. Are you? I'm excited. Is it that Santa's coming and you're jacked? Yeah. Or is it that you have to get... Oh, my heart was racing all day yesterday. Why? I was trying to figure out why. And did you know that chocolate, like it's not just the sugar that makes you hyper, it's... 
chocolate is caffeinated. Yeah. Yeah. So I didn't, <laughs> I had one coffee and I was feeling like amped up. So I'm like, oh man, okay, I need to calm it down. I'll just switch to hot chocolates. So I had a bunch of hot chocolates yesterday <laughs> and I wanted to run a marathon. <laughs> That's like <laughs> until collapsing at night. That's like people who are like, no, 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 coffee's got too much caffeine. I'll just have a tea, which has more caffeine. Yeah, just, <laughs> I'm Zen and Jax right now. Yeah, sorry. Here I just, I I'm just. My question is. Also, we started talking about Gary Bettman. I know, but I, I really need, I really need the, 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 the answer here. Okay. How badly does it damage the NHL? If they don't go? If they don't go. Uh, Bob McCowan had an interesting argument. I think it was Bob McCowan against going to the Olympics. Um, so we remember Salt Lake. Canada won gold. Cool. We remember Vancouver. Mm-hmm. Canada won gold. Cool. Um, do we remember that much about Sochi? Was Sochi that big of a deal? No, and the game I'm talking was- about. I'm talking about men's, by the way. Yeah, women's was women's different. was a slam dunk, but like when it comes to the NHL, well, they the the Canadian team just walked through the competition. Walked through. It was borderline boring. Oh no, like, the, the no no make no mistake, the gold medal game was boring. Yeah, yeah. and like part of that's because Nicholas Backstrom wasn't there. I believe they beat the well, states. Maybe, maybe he shouldn't get a cold. <laughs> they well, oh, super mm. fed. They beat the states in the most highly anticipated game of the tournament, one nothing, because <laughs> Carey Price. I think it was one nothing. Um, Might have been an empty net. Pfft, who knows? <laughs> Might have been an empty yeah, net. I yeah, don't t- think Tortorella so. Tortorella back when he was crazy just <laughs> pulled the goalie. <laughs> and the and now, now he's saying again. In the middle of the first. <laughs> it's like, what an amazing story. He was crazy in September and just pulled it together. Uh, no, no, no. He just figured it out. Yeah, I love that. That everybody's like, oh yeah, Tortorella, he's reformed now. You know, he what wasn't reformed when Team USA was losing. What happened? He's working in Columbus, where there's zero media that anybody cares about, and when he comes to Toronto, everybody makes a big deal, and people react to him because he's still crazy. But he's currently coaching in Columbus, and they're currently no winning. When they're winning, and no one's really paying attention. Exactly. Anyone can be in high. a good mood when you're winning. Exactly. Yeah. It's gonna be. Everyone has one. Everyone has one. I want to see how he reacts to Columbus's first like real mm-hmm. skid. Everyone has one. It won't be because they're doing anything wrong necessarily. Sometimes you just have a skid. Everyone has a skid. <laughs> skid. So okay. <laughs> Salt Lake. Great story. Uh-huh. Vancouver. Uh, better story. Better story. Sochi. Same result as Salt Lake in Vancouver, but we don't really remember as much. Torino. <laughs> well, because they lost too. They They lost, USA lost. I mean, who did Sweden beat in the gold medal game? Was it Finland? Finland. I think it was Finland. Was it? I'm pretty sure it was. The fact we're having this conversation. Um, Nagano. Nagano was kind of cool. It was cool because it was the first time. I was also a kid and had nothing to do but pay attention. Sweden, Finland. So I remember that. Yeah. Sweden, Finland, wow. And Nagano was cool because Hashik stole the show and the Canadians were expected to win. Yeah. And, and Wayne Gretzky, or was it Mark Messier wasn't even picked for the team and they were like, what? Yeah, they picked, that was a big deal. They picked Rob Zaminer instead. Uh, and I remember Messier crying on the bench. Uh, Gretzky wasn't selected for the shootout. So <laughs> McCowan was arguing. <laughs> wow. I know. What a goofy time. I know. McCowan was arguing that the non North American Olympics are actually not that important to the NHL. We have been sitting here arguing the exact opposite. Um, I think you got to build the Asian market. You uh, have to. As you said years ago, whoever wins Asia wins. But is South Korea the Asian market? Is it yes, it is. No. yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes. Because the NHL doesn't think so, because they want to go to China, but they don't really care to go to South Korea. Well, it's the same time zone, though. And they're, they're wrong. roughly. They're also wrong. China that doesn't is, have time zones. Well, it's right there. And and yes, I know, I understand that South Korea and China, vastly, vastly different audiences. Probably a lot but, of Chinese tourism, too, but, for the Olympics. But you have to. You must. I don't must. Know. Yeah, I would agree with that. For sure. It's yeah. right there. You know. must in that, if South Asia is a goal, which if smart business practice would tell you, it has to be. I can tell you that like a, a brand like the New York Yankees or a brand like the Toronto Maple Leafs or a brand like the Dallas Cowboys, they care about worldwide. They want to be known worldwide. Is it is it their first strategy? No, but they've got they they realize that New York that New York Yankees cap is a worldwide brand. Mm-hmm. Worldwide. It keeps them dominant. Hockey doesn't quite have that. Mm. But if you would like it to be there, you have to start doing it. You have to start marketing it. I 
have trouble believing that billionaires don't will turn down an opportunity to make money. I don't think they're going to make money right away on this, and I think that's why they're turning. It I down. think they look at China and they say they can make money on it, but they're not also South looking. Korea. They're also looking at cost and spending money. But yeah. the IOC is what covering the Olympics it. is right. Oh, they are. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So then, yeah, exactly. What's their excuse? Yeah. What? Are, there is what, no excuse, and that's what the IOC is saying. So I think the obvious. Well, the thinking behind it is they're just trying to strong arm the PA, right? It, so, okay. well, that's ex- my, they're nakedly doing that. N- exactly. Yeah. So, because they're nakedly doing it, and because, like Jesse said, they're not allergic to money, mm-hmm. when do they relent? Yeah. Well, they're going to have to. This is a weird recipe because they never relent, but it seems like they're. They should. Yeah. Okay, so, so here, here are two perfect opportunities to, to, to penetrate the South Asian market. You've got, you've got Seoul, and then you've got, is it Beijing in 2020? Yeah. Or 2022, yeah, yeah. sorry? Is they're, that? they're going back to Beijing, yeah. yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. So you've got both of those markets. So you can hit them mm-hmm. both within four years of each other, right? Yeah. Tell me you don't take that opportunity. See, it makes Especially, so much sense. Uh, my question is why not? Because I think, I think it's a, for the owners, a lot of them are looking at like, <laughs> The, this team is an asset for me, and not even necessarily a money making asset. I don't know if I'm going to own the team by them. I don't care if the NH. They're, the owners are self interested. I don't think the owners generally, generally mm-hmm. care that much ten years down the road. I really don't because a lot of them will not be the owners in ten years, and they look at hmm. they look at these teams. These are not these are not like the old school owners like we think of are owning our cars. We want to take care of our cars because it's our, no. it's our one investment. A lot of those owners back in the day, that was like a, that was important for them. That was their team. It was a family owned team. I don't think it's like that anymore. I think they look at these as this is a, a part of my massive investment portfolio. I own a multi, multi billion dollar company. It's not important for me. You know what I just realized? This is next year. Yeah. Yep. And we still don't know yet. It's next well, year. It's I keep not, thinking it's two. It's, it's not. not. It's not next year. It's next year. It's 2018. Yeah. It's next so it's, year. We're not, we're not in 2017. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, but dude. No, yeah, it's okay. Like, okay. It's, no, but we still have to live a whole other year and then like a little half year. It's like 14 months away. Yeah. Like 16. No. 14. It's in February. In February. Oh, okay. 14 okay. months. All right. All right. Like, you know what I'm... Yeah. Right. yeah. It's, it's a not, baby and a half away. Here's... Can I, can I just point this out? <laughs> can I just point this out? What other league? What other league? It's not close, but like not that close. Oh, I just, I'm just talking about my unit of measurement. <laughs> but what other league? Where this no, would this not be decided in? Come on! Didn't the NBA have something like this? No, mm. the not, NBA not would not never the step in the way of of their players going. And well, and that's it's also it's in the also, off season. It is. So, it's but like, they they it's are concerned because inevitably somebody gets injured, right? Yeah. But I think I think we we're kind of at a standstill here. So we've kind of figured out why they're doing it. Mm-hmm. We've kind of figured out what they have to do. Mm-hmm. It's just a matter of what's going to happen. It, it's it, very it, confusing. I think a lot of this comes down to how good of a negotiator Donald Fair is. <sighs> I'm so sick of this Goku Vegeta thing. <laughs> That the NHL and the PA have going on. What do you mean? Every couple years, Bettman and Fair's hair yeah. turns blonde and their <laughs> eyes turn green and they yell and they scream and yellow sparks fly and they arm wrestle and the ground beneath them caves in and then at the end, everything around them is destroyed and they decide they're friends again. I have a question. Yes. Why is it so much easier for the other leagues to get things like this done? Because the other leagues are far better at making money. There you go. <laughs> okay. And I think I think what they've done is they've proven to themselves. Well, hey, if we if we get this off the table, we're going to make all this money. And I think the NBA, the NBA especially. What did you tell me? The salary cap in the NBA is going up to next year. Well, the MLB just signed their new collective bargaining bargaining agreement with no work stoppage at all. They have plenty of time. Mm -hmm. And then the NBA just decided to up their salary cap to one hundred and twenty million dollars. In the next couple of years, so who's who's Which, stepping in the way of that, <laughs> right? No, no, especially because they have revenue sharing. They've the NBA is a w- very well run league, mm-hmm. and they've got guaranteed contracts, which is different from the NFL, which is also a very well run league. Although, boy, well, lately, holy jeez, maybe Business-wise, financially, financially, yeah. financially yeah. they are. But, uh, but the NBA kind of hard to deny. But the NBA, I, it's I hard think, to deny both ways. Pretty hard yeah. to to like. I mean, the NBA got a great commissioner. They've got some owners that are real characters, like uh, far more. Characteristics than hockey owners are, mm-hmm. and that are maybe, generally maybe at least one that's a bit more of a character than they prefer. Yeah, probably. Mark <laughs> Cuban is definitely that guy. Yeah, that's not the one I meant. 
<laughs> oh, do you mean the racist guy in LA? Oh, no, he's not an owner. He's, he's, he's gone. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Uh, Ballmer Steve, stepped, Steve Ballmer stepped in. And by the way, you need to look at <laughs> oh, the video of Steve Ballmer dancing to Fergie. LA. Yes, also Ballmer is a, quite a personality. Yeah, well. Steve Ballmer's awesome. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, oh, he's I don't cool. Know much about it. Um, but the, uh, <laughs> I think, I think the, the NHL needs to figure out a way to stop fighting within itself and start making some money. And yeah, the way nice. the way to make money is to stop fighting within yourself because what this does, what does this do? If you're an advertiser, all right, and you know anything about the NHL and you know and you see this coming, how likely are you? Or if you're a TV person and you're and you're you're a TV exec and you're an American TV exec where it's big money. I mean, who's it, not Canadian, by the way? Yeah, mm-hmm. not like Canadian, Canadian yeah. company. Like again, I, I say this every now and then. American listeners don't understand how bulletproof hockey is yeah, it's, like to advertisers here in well, the states it's got to be different yeah. there are certain brands who like gary bettman could walk up to their president and kick him in the balls and they still Canadian probably buy hockey. <laughs> i mean oh go down the list <laughs> yeah. go down tim hortons will Scotia never Bank. not be Scotia connected Bank. to hockey <laughs> Scotia Bank and that dude in the blue suit mm-hmm. will never not be mm-hmm. attached to <laughs> hockey in the blue suit. it's true everything they use hockey to sell absolutely everything in this country which is but not in the states and not in the states and so you so keeping that in mind if you are the nhl and you're the nhl pa you have got to stop the infighting you've Mm -hmm. got to stop the petty bs and you've got to start and i know that's not the style of today negotiating in good faith but again it's goku and vegeta except goku and vegeta were on the same side sometimes so it's like goku sell (laughs) are they acting bigger than they are Yes. Because who's this? The NHL. Yes. They're like what? Yes. Fifth, probably Fourth. sixth biggest sport in the US after college football. Oh, yeah. After maybe the UFC. College basketball. College basketball. Does even? college count? It yes. shouldn't. It's a little bit unfair. It shouldn't because they're not paying their players and they're yeah. making scads of There's no, what's the collective bargaining agreement there? They don't have one. You play and we don't kick you out. Yeah. Of so if we're, if we're talking just professional sports. But they, have, they have billion dollar TV deals. Agreed. <laughs> but let's talk professional sports. Okay. Let's just keep it to that because it's okay. unf- it's a it's a bit of an unfair comparison. Yeah. Yeah. Although I see what you're saying, and you're absolutely totally, right. Totally. Yeah. Totally. So we're talking professional sports. They're f- they're fifth behind UFC then, and they don't even have a collective bargaining agreement. I don't know about fifth behind UFC, but they're no better than fourth. They're yeah. no better than fourth, and they are acting out of their league. And they're they are every point is so hard in the NHL. It is so hard to... Everything has to be argued. Yeah. You imagine how exhausting it is. Yeah. It's funny. Like, okay, we, we talk about how, you know, Gary Bettman's reputation, and we, we know what it is, and he doesn't relent. Mm-hmm. Donald Fear, for the rest of his life, has the I ruined a World Series <laughs> mistletoe above his head. <laughs> yeah, that sucks. I can't believe... That's amazing. It's amazing to me that that happened. <laughs> How does that happen mid-season? Yeah. Baseball, man. But they'll never Baseball. let it happen again. No. They learned their lesson. They will never let... Guess what it did? It screwed a bunch of billionaires out of the thing that they love the most. Mm-hmm. Billions of dollars. Montreal out of a baseball team. <laughs> That's my point. That's they their will death never... by popcorn. Now, the NHL is... had that happen. They got a whole bunch of mil- billionaires who got screwed out of making money, and they were like, nah... Now nah, well, let's 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 have another one in seven years. How close was it to lockout? Seven years? I think it was what was, was two thousand four to twenty thirteen. Oh, okay. No, no two thousand five. It ended in two thousand five. So five. yeah, till twenty twelve. Twenty twelve. So seven years. Oh, jeez. And they didn't learn their lesson. Well, in, no! Vegas, in Vegas, and they still haven't doesn't learned. Doesn't even start till next year. They're not going to have a lockout. So so again, <sighs> they should go to the Olympics. They like making money. Vegas is just coming to town. They're going. They're going to this thing. They have to. When go. do we find out they're going? <laughs> uh, the day before, because that's the <laughs> NHL. I swear to, I swear to you, if they, have, they have about four and a half, five weeks to figure it out. Yeah. Believe me, it will be four weeks and six days before we know. <laughs> now, here's a concern. Let's pretend the NHL does bend. Right? <laughs> I know. Come on. I know. But let's pretend they do bend and we go to the Olympics. Who's the first in the association to go, see, they bent. Let's ask for more. <laughs> and now fair. Get, and now, I know. And then we get closer to a lockout again. Yep. Negotiating Just, good faith. We Adam, try I'm it telling again. you, brush up on your UFC because Jesse and I are starting a UFC <laughs> podcast. Or we'll just we'll just keep this one, right? Yeah, no. But the that's all we're going to have to talk we'll about it, is UFC. We'll call it Fight Night with Dangle. Yeah. yeah. 
Every night is fight night. Dangerous Dangle. <laughs> I'm gonna change my name. Catch these fists with yeah. Steve Dangle. I'm gonna wear a tattoo sleeve. Please, like, like <laughs> but don't wear but, affliction clothing. Oh, yeah, totally, oh, man. Yeah, we should do that for sure. Hey, welcome to the Panago Pizza Tap Out <laughs> Steve Dangle <laughs> Podcast. <laughs> Brought to you by Whey Protein. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, now, now we answer your questions in the Jack Lynx press conference. <laughs> and other Everybody manly bullshit. GNC tonight. Oh, man. Yeah, we'll see you at GNC. That's Get right. protein shakers. <laughs> And we're going to start selling fit tea on our Instagrams. <laughs> yeah. All right. And now our phone in guest, buff dude from Instagram who yells every couple of weeks. Uh, there's a, there's actually. How about a Plumposaurus Rex? <laughs> Why don't you go catch a Gaines at you? Uh, anyway. Hey guys, before we, well, I know we have a Christmas gift exchange and we're running out of time here. I have something first that I would like to play for you that I wanted to play for you last episode. And I wasn't able to do so. Oh, I think I know what I'm this is. I'm a little is. concerned about this because I feel like, and Jesse said we have to go ahead with it. I have, I've I have a question, though, first. Okay. Do you want to do this first, or do you want to check up on our favorite neighborhood? <gasps> Oshawa? <laughs> I don't know. You know what? We'll leave it to Steve. What do you think? Do you want to go know what's up with Levi Maestra or Livvich? I think both. I feel, yeah. like, I feel like Levi Maestro... Then we get back into the Christmas spirit with Libvich, and then we open some lovely Agreed. presents. Because Levi, Levi Maestro could go one of two ways here. Because here's oh the thing: I worry, oh I worry boy. with this that we're oh boy. Because oh boy, after he now, if you if you remember, Levi Maestro is the guy that had um, a, a watch, watch that, that didn't doesn't tell time. tell time. Because if you're focused on what you love, time shouldn't matter. It says something about you. It talks about your dedication. I'm so we, we if, if, you're missed, if you missed that voice. podcast, look it up. Now, this video is uh, is interesting because it was sent to us by a listener, and I worried. I asked Jesse when I said when I saw this, I'm like, "Are we going after this guy personally?" And if that's the case, I felt I felt sort of bad. It's a podcast it's like a, <laughs> but, about a guy. But Jesse said, "No, we have to do this. We have to talk about this." So, what what does bored Morgan Freeman have to say? That's kind of what he sounds I'm like. I'm selling watches. <laughs> so I am going to play for you a video. It is two minutes and 14 seconds long. We can stop and start. Oh. But let it let it breathe a little bit here because I want you to understand what's going on here. Um, All I want for Christmas is Mike Francesa watching Levi Maestro. <laughs> <laughs> so here we go. I am Levi Maestro and I'm a creative artist. Pause it? This is the new term to... Re- Already? What happened to his voice? Well, hang on. It'll come back. It'll come back. Just, just let it breathe. Like I said, you gotta let this breathe. I am Levi Maestro, and I'm a creative artist. This is the new term to refer to yourself as a general creative person. I am beginning to realize how important it is to never lose sight of the thing that you love the most or the thing that you feel you're most talented at. And for me, that will always be videos. A rare day in Los Angeles. As last night it rained, it's so clear right now you can see for miles. It's still a little gray over here because I think some more rain is coming, but it's beautiful. Who cares? If I did not have to carry a laptop around or a camera around, I would never use a backpack. Can you pause it? Who likes to have anything on their back? <laughs> like as a figure of speech, right? We don't ever... But it's like uh, my backpack is me putting in work because all the things that I contain in my bag are things that I use to work and to make money. So I want to ask you that it is called the video is called Levi Maestro coastal creativity. A lot of pictures of, of him skateboarding and, and, and taking videos of himself by the beach and talking about the forecast. Um, what is this video about? I'll tell you what he reminds me of. An exercise from drama class where you were not allowed to stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. The way he talked. Mm-hmm. They, they give you yeah. a subject. Yeah. You're at the gas station. Uh, I'm at the gas station and I'm filling up my car and maybe I'll go into the station and get a bag of chips. Chips are one of my favorite things to buy at the gas station. And uh, maybe but I'll clean like off Del my Pickle. car Del Pickle. while I'm at the gas station. And, you know, that reminds me I should wash my clothes when I get home. And then, holy shit, Levi, what are you getting to? 
How far into the video are we? You haven't said a damn thing. So I want to, that's why I'm asking the he question. He said something very important. I want to ask you, and Jesse, don't give this away. <laughs> what is this video about? Is it just about him or is he selling something? I'm asking you a question. What do you think the video is about? At this point, we are four, 59 <sighs> seconds in. All I could think the entire video was there's nothing in that fucking backpack. <laughs> <laughs> All right. He is selling an empty backpack. So let's continue. And those are the things that we need to do. It's a backpack you can't open. To keep going. All I ever used to do the things that I really enjoyed in my life was a skateboard, a video camera, and a computer. So in case fit into my life in that way, I just remembered it coming so. Did you hear it? Synchronized. Uh, no, I think I missed it. The Apple computer. Okay. And so, <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna play that part one more oh. time. Don't say it. Don't say it. Ready? In case fit into my life in that way, I just remembered it coming so synchronized with the Apple computer. And I thought that's very unique because I hadn't seen a pairing that I could remember that felt so obvious. It was like, oh, if you're gonna have an Apple computer and you're gonna have a backpack, then you're gonna have an in-case backpack. <laughs> what? What the fuck is he selling? If anybody had ever seen Maestro knows they got one thing from it, and that <laughs> thing was motivation. <laughs> it didn't matter if the kid wanted to be a Who is this guy? Or a chef what? This isn't the same person who did the watch commercial. So again, this isn't the same guy. This is he's seen Maestro. <laughs> Maestro knows, which was his video series, apparently that he made him a YouTube okay, star. Thank God. But I, he I talks have... like someone doing an impression of Ice T. <laughs> So I doesn't he? Let's continue. What happened? I want to I want to play it one more time. So in case fit into my life in that way, I just remembered it coming so synchronized with the Apple computer, and I thought that's very unique because I hadn't seen a pairing that I could remember that felt so obvious. It was like, oh, if you're gonna have an Apple computer, and you're gonna have a backpack, then you're gonna have an in case backpack. <laughs> So what's he selling? A, a laptop backpack? Bingo. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. That's yeah. called a backpack, <laughs> Levi! What the fuck? But Are you fucking serious? Sell me a pencil next! It's an in-case backpack. call it a hand-write thing! <laughs> <laughs> so, so, oh my god. We're gonna finish off the video. It's made of nothing but wood, graphite, and your own mind. <laughs> So, this guy is a schmuck. <laughs> well, it took him 59 seconds in the video to even hit the fact that he was talking about a backpack. But we got to finish the video. Keep listening. If anybody had ever seen Maestro knows they got one thing from it, and that thing was motivation. It didn't matter if the kid wanted to be a DJ or a chef or make videos just like me. They were motivated to go and pursue what they loved. This time around, I'm really just focusing on self-discipline and making my stories where I'm happy with them and letting the rest be the rest. So I'm confused. Was that a vlog or a commercial for his backpack? That was a two-minute commercial for his in-case backpack. called coastal creativity nowhere on there does it mark ad by the way um which i think you're supposed to do in the states uh however it is on the in case um, youtube page so i'm assuming that they people just assume i'm trying to remember who was talking about it it might have been joe rogan or was it it was a comedian i think i'm trying to remember who it was but it's basically people decide i'm gonna make this person successful they don't yes! they don't like his products they're, they're not particularly interested in anything. They don't have this desire to buy them, but they're like, fuck it. I'm team this guy, and they're going to succeed. God damn it. I'm going to go to a Dane Cook show. I'm not going to laugh at a single joke, but I'm going to yell and scream and cheer him the whole fucking time because go Dane Cook. Go Dane Cook. I'm one of the first guys to follow him on MySpace. Let's do it. What is this cultural phenomenon? <laughs> well, and I think that leads me to this. He's, he's like a Kardashian who was never famous in the first place. People just decided this. Just, he makes his living doing this shit? Apparently so. And that's why I think you're going to find this next piece of information interesting. What the fuck? 
you haven't even what the fuck yet. It's a five hundred dollar backpack, guaranteed. Well, I mean, I think everything is in case is pretty expensive. Oh, I've had in case cases. I've never had an in case backpack. What, is an in, what does that mean? In case in case is just the, the one they sell in the Apple Store. Yeah, that's all, and that's why he's like. He in he was like synchronized. He said MacBooks are synchronized with the with the case. I don't I've think they're synchronized. As in that fits so well with my MacBook. But he said synchronized, synchronized. which I think is hilarious because um, the the only reason people buy in case cases is just because that's the one that's there when you're buying your new laptop, right? It's Did just you like, know that any 15 inch laptop slot fits a 15 inch laptop? I believe though synchronization is always an issue. Mm. Now. <laughs> We're not done. And Levi, that's- Levi Maestro owes me lunch money if I ever see him. <laughs> I, I can't believe people like this exist. We're not done. We're not done. <laughs> and you're right. I think you make a great point about people that just decide, bingo, someone's famous. Because I, I looked up his Maestro Nose series. I don't see a whole lot of traction there. Now, I could be looking at the wrong things, and he, he might reach out to the show and contact us and correct me, and I'm open to that. But here's what I do know. Le- <laughs> Levi, what do you do? That will be my lead. On FoxSports.com. Los Angeles-based filmmaker slash personality Levi Maestro is creating a new online series for Fox Sports entitled The Maestro. What? The series will be, and this is is from 2015, by the way. The series will be an adapted format of Levi's current series, Maestro Knows, which began in 2009 and features short film pieces that entertain and educate audiences. Uh, And the idea with this is to bring it Bring bring you closer to the athletes. So one video I looked up with Chris it was um, Humphreys. No, Love uh, 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 Cavaliers. Love. Kevin Love. Kevin Love. They have basically they're in <laughs> Kevin Love's house, and he presents him with a piece of art that his friend made, and he's like, "Oh, that's cool." And Kevin loves, "Oh, that's cool." And that's it. It's like a one minute video. Oh now he got to, he got close enough to Kevin Love. Absolutely, to there's a, actually a bunch of people. Um, Randall Cobb, he's, he gets to hang out with a few other people. Um, and the idea with this is that he's supposed to bring you closer to the athletes and take them out of the comfort zone. I just want to point out. Am I being a hypocrite? I just want to point out that Levi Levi Maestro did or and still probably does digital videos for Fox Sports One. To put this into context, Levi Maestro is now to Fox Sports One. What Steve Dangle is to Sportsnet. This is the thing. I was. Am I a hypocrite? Because, man, people comment That's on my shit. So true. People comment on my shit all the time. How the fuck does this guy get? Like, how is he allowed to talk to the Leafs? But I, I think the difference is, Steve. You had a following. You had a following. Not a huge one. Okay, but not you by had... YouTube standards. And by the way, I love you all. It's not about the number. You had a you. No, no. You had a following. Yeah. You had a following. This guy was just some guy. He was a guy that made videos, but I'm not sure that he, uh, he had a following. And that's my point in saying, I looked up Maestro Nose. I'm not seeing any numbers that suggest to me there was any legitimate following here. And the Maestro Nose series, it's like it's like vlogging in 2009, which was just, it's just boring. Like, there's nothing going on. I, I you know what? I would be fascinated to talk to this guy. I would actually I would be too. Because I, I, I can guarantee you I know you exactly how he is, and I've met a few people like this in my life. YouTubers? They're No, no, no. They're not necessarily bad people. Uh, they're not necessarily dumb. They're not necessarily talentless. They're just these people who waltz through life, and they get everything. They get everything, and you go, how the fuck do you do it? Are they good at networking? No, you're not even a good communicator. Does he have good ideas? No, they're all shit. How does he do it? And we sit here and yell and scream, and then you're a hater. But, <laughs> but it's like, I don't get it. I'm fucking flabbergasted. And I think those people are also ignorant to the fact that they have no skill. Yo, oh, oh my 100%. God. He doesn't know himself I'll tell you what it that is. he is clueless to everything. I'll tell you what it is right now. It's they're... kind of the beauty about him. It's yeah. like... It's I, like a confident Forrest Gump. It, bingo. A confident, not humble Forrest Gump. It's it's somebody <laughs> who's great at salesmanship. If no! You, no, he didn't sell me that to shit! You. Yeah, not, not to in the videos, but maybe. I, but it, it is very clear that somebody at Fox Sports 1 believed in him. And somebody at Which is more than I can well. say for us. No one at Fox Sports 1 believes in us. He, he went Sports to Sportsnet does, thank God. Or in case reached out to him and they struck him a, a deal. Yeah. yeah. 
And so I, I just so I can't hate that on his behalf. Yeah. I I I have to say I don't think his content goes anywhere. I didn't uh, uh, there's nothing about the first minute of that video that makes any sort of sense. This is one of those it's just he's speaking in rhetoric. He'd be a great politician. This like, is one of those mind fuck things. I'm sitting here going, do I do anything? Do I do anything? You do content. Am I him? him? Am I just Canadian no. him? No. <laughs> I hope not. No, you're no, not. No, That's no, why no. I wanted. I wanted I, that. I think I work hard. I think I make a bunch Adam, of shit. Maybe I don't. Maybe I, don't. I, I wanted. I, I think, wanted Steve I to laugh t- a little bit more. You told the thing. robot that he's a robot, and now it's just <laughs> it's going all over his mind. You know what? This is that scene from Rick and Morty. What is my purpose? You pass butter. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm the robot that passes butter. You made him aware and it's not good. Yeah. They yeah. Oh Cybernet is aware. It's aware. Self aware. And now <laughs> now there can only be an explosion. There can it would only be World War Three. So listen, I think listen, I don't want to go after the guy personally because I think personally he's probably a really nice dude. Man, do your thing. Do, do you. If you do can do it, thing. good for you. I but it does more, make me I was mad when I thought he was just a con artist. But now that I know a little bit more about him, I think he's just one of those fucking yeah. people who just... You're right. Wee! Sk- that's why he's so good at skateboarding. Just wee! All the way through life. I don't get it. And don't he doesn't either. know he's doing it. Doesn't know that's he's doing it. That's the scariest it. part. There's lots of people out there like yeah. that. And you know what? I don't trust anyone who... Listen, some of the younger folks listening right now, you might not get it. And as as you get older, you're going to be like, fuck, this is exactly what Steve was talking about. I I am untrusting of people who I can't I cannot explain to you how how they make their money. Me too. Me too. Very. So what is the, what do they do? Like my wife does this to me all the time. So what do they do? And if if I'm Elmer Fudden after 30 seconds abadi abadi that's Not all trustworthy. folks. Because I don't know what they do. We've had consultant We've I've had, had some consultants. Oh, yeah. Oh consultant. boy, there's a lot That's of consultants. Out there. They exist. Yeah. I'm in sales. I'm exist. in consulting. Yeah. What do you do in sales? What kind of consulting? I'm in business. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> I'm in you business. can't just say that. What do you do? Technically speaking, I have friends in business, and they tell me what they do, and then I go and I tell people what they do. We're in business with this show. This is a business. Yeah. We're. I mean, we're in the business of media. We're in that business. I don't That's know what business. this fucking guy does. So, he's a vampire for sure. He's a content creator. He's a liver of he's life. A, no, here's my favorite one. Influencer. Oh! <laughs> I have, no, I have seen so many people who are not influential call themselves influencers online. Uh, you don't get to call you an influencer. Yeah. People call you influential or they don't. You don't get to say that about yourself. You don't get that. What, what if I say he's a videographer slash personality? That's fair. Is that enough to pin him down? That's a conversation starter. Oh, what sort of things have you done? He, and then maybe he and, can and get then, into and it and go, says, I talked to Kevin Love. And then he yeah. says, I made a video for Fox Sports where I gave Kevin Love a prize or an art piece of art. A piece of art. So well, I would ask him what I get asked every day. I, okay, I work at Sportsnet. Well, you work at Sportsnet? Yeah, yeah. How'd that happen? And I tell them, well, it's this long process. It starts in 2007. And, and Levi would say, I made this series Maestro called knows. Maestro Knows. And then they saw it, and I told them about it, and they decided to give me... <laughs> Fuck! Oh, I'm oh. Levi Maestro! <laughs> <laughs> Fuck! There's a path to his career. <laughs> I'm some schmuck. I'm and- a consultant. I didn't know it. <laughs> and Steve Dangle says, I made these videos on YouTube, and Sportsnet saw them. And then I said, hey, look at this backpack that fits this laptop per- perfectly. You know what I got for Christmas? And Self-awareness. <laughs> <laughs> and then my dog got featured on the uh, board at the ACC. <laughs> I bet people, what the fuck are you talking about? Nike sent him to this. Why is this dog on the boards at the Air Canada Center? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He has he literally has a recurring bit about him getting free shit and then free shit shows up. Who the fuck is this person? Steve. Oh my god, I'm Levi Maestro. You're, you're Levi Maestro. And I'm not even as good. I don't know how to skateboard. We need a t-shirt. I we should, we should we, No, we, we need a shirt that you can't wear. We <laughs> that's what we need. <laughs> it's a shirt that you just kind of staple to the wall. <laughs> Except he doesn't talk like that. We Who is this person? We should have a shirt that says "We are all Levi Maestro." We are Levi. Maestro. Is this guy my Tyler Durden? At what point do I realize you're just showing me videos oh. of myself? <laughs> you haven't been sleeping lately, have you? Whoa! Oh my god! <laughs> and you have everything from the IKEA catalog. No, you don't. We <laughs> are living in Fight Club. Oh my god! <laughs> Let's not talk about it now. I wow. 
I didn't realize how deep this would go. I just thought it would be a hilarious thing and we'd leave it to the side. No, it's true. It's, I didn't it's, realize. It's, Steve, here, can I tell you the difference, though, the real difference here? <laughs> Am I from Kiel's Vernia? <laughs> what, is, what a sham! What a sham that you are! You should be a sham. I'm in pen right now. <laughs> let this, me let me just dip in with some truth. Some d- dip in with some truth here. Oh, this is hard to explain. tell us how to take a four hundred five. This is hard to explain. The, the The thing is, you create content that so is Levi. actually robust. everything is content. No, a Tumblr is content. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. You create something <laughs> that, is, that. that is that is. You create robust content, content that has depth, mm-hmm. content. content that has color, that pulls people in. That's called sticky in my world. They so call it sticky content saying, that keeps you okay. not only engaged at the time, sticky? but coming back for more. That's what the radio consultants will call that sticky content. Sticky. Because it's sticky. It sticks to you. You want to go. You want to go back. It pulls you back in. That is what you create. That is special. So don't worry. You're not actually. You're not actually Levi Maestro. I, I just I thought it was Levi hilarious, Maestro. the combination. This is fucked. I think I might be Levi Maestro. <laughs> Can we find out what's going on in LiveVidge and move on from this? Because I yes. feel like Steve's going to be in, a, in, a, in the fetal position I think we're going to put this. Steve in one of those moods. No! <laughs> no, 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 I'm fine. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. You should be very proud of what you've accomplished, my friend. Apparently not. No, you shouldn't. Apparently <laughs> not. You're no, Levi. you shouldn't. No. <laughs> Anyways. It's a career where you do nothing. <laughs> it's a career. You worked very hard for this. <laughs> he thinks that too. <laughs> he, I, you know what? I bet he does think that. Yeah. And I can't. Who am I to dispute that? I don't know. Yeah. Anyways, let's check in. With, with <laughs> Maybe we should have done Liberty Village, Village first. Yeah. I think we ruined. We broke him. We broke him. We t- we told the robot he's he's a robot. I'm wondering why anybody's my friend. <laughs> I'm wondering what like what is my wife seeing me? I Mrs. Dangle's gonna hate me for this. So we might have the most passive aggressive Liberty Village post ever. Whoa! Ooh, it's right. the only one we're doing today. Okay, and I can't from, wait. And it's from. Kurt. I would just like to congratulate Steve Dangle on doing so <laughs> many so things many in his things. career. <laughs> He must work so hard. Now, every time I get an email where someone goes, I know you're a busy guy, I, I'm going to think they're fucking with me. I don't think so. I think people know. Anybody that knows you knows. Anybody that listens to this show, watches your Stop videos, it. they know. Stop it. What? Listen, somebody's got to be there to support you when you're down. And I, be- I am a believer in Steve Dangle as much as I make fun you're of You're one of those people who forces Levi Maestro down the rabbit hole even further. <laughs> And makes him believe that he's no, Levi Maestro. Levi Maestro would never be able to step out of himself. This dude's name himself. is like Ned Saunders. Dude, he, but one day his what, he, yeah, he, he, he had a hype man named Adam Wilde who just gave him the confidence to be Levi Maestro. So you're missing the point, Steve Dangle. That's not a real name. Ho hum. Do you think Levi Maestro has ever had an existential crisis in his life? <laughs> no, because he walks us through life you just until he hears out. this podcast and goes, "Holy fuck, am I an angry Canadian?" I just want you to know also, you know, Beacom, his, his, his global brand that he was selling little watches with, he unfortunately had to shut it down because the kick started and didn't kick. He posted that on his Instagram. He seems like a genuinely good dude, and I feel bad for him. Because he's just, la, 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 I'm just walking through life. He's, I don't think that'll he's rattle. He's a happy balloon floating People who are around. extremely successful do not let failure bother them that much. And... He's a guy that I'm sure it bugged him a little bit, but I'm sure he'll move I on. I went to school. I'm not even, I, I can't say the name. We'll call him Joe. Um, all the way through school, like every semester I would show up and go, oh, he's still here. <laughs> I thought he would have dropped out. There's no way he's passing any classes. And then like, sh- before we even graduated, he's on TV. I'm like, what the fuck? Wow. <laughs> what, is, what is he doing? Is what he am still? I missing? Is he still? I'm not sure. I think so. Wow. Well, hey, everybody's got their path. All right, guys. And again, I can't hate on that. He was such a nice guy. Can't hate on such that. Such a nice guy. I loved him. And I'm not hating on Levi. I just think, I think the, I would, if I were his producer, I would focus those videos up. That's for sure. Why? He's doing so well. Well, that's the part where I'm like, mm, I don't see the numbers to back it up. Who's, who's, uh, w- William Ray Johnson or whatever? Ray William Johnson. Ray William Johnson. Oh, man, his videos are so annoying. Guess what? Millions of views. Fuck you. Like, that's how I would act if I was him. True that. Oh, okay. Anyway, sorry. So this post has 198 likes. Liberty Village. Whoa. I need to know whether it's passive aggressive bullshit or if they're like making a a good point in a creative way. All right. Well, now you live there, so you can also speak to this. Yes. Okay. So someone pinned to a tree a sign. (laughs) 
Let me guess. They're mad about the tree. Yeah, right away. They're mad about hurting the tree. Tell me it's they're mad about hurting the tree. No. It's about dog poo. So. Definitely. The sign says, want to get into yoga? Start by bending over and picking up after your dog. (laughs) Known as the downward dog position. That's funny. What? Clean up after your dog. It's good for you. Okay. So that's. Do we support this? I do. I do too. As a dog owner, I I can't stand when I see I, I watch it happen all the time at the park. People just like, oh, I'm gonna pretend that didn't happen. Especially like Liberty Village is not a sparse place. Like there's people walking around all the time, which means like, and there's very little green space. Yeah, not only are you a bad enough person to have your dog shit while you're alone and just walk away from it, you're a bad enough person that people saw your dog shit and you don't. You care. saw them seeing your dog taking a shit and you just went, yeah, I don't, I don't care. I'm just going to go about my life, walk away from the shit, and sell backpacks. Let's say one in 50 people is the person Steve just described. Mm-hmm. How many people That's live in Liberty Village? Too many. Right? Yeah. You know, think about that. You have thousands of people there, which means you've got hundreds of assholes who are not picking up after the dog. I am with her. I believe it. I stand with her. I will give, me and Steve will like it, and we will bring it to 200 likes. Because it's only got 198. I, I, thought, I thought this would go that way. Oh. Uh-oh. Because you two gentlemen have turned soft since you've gotten your dogs. Wow. Whoa. What? This is very unnecessary. What do you mean? You don't need to say, hey, do you want to get into yoga? Pick up after your dog. I mean, it is Are, rather mom Is this, is this from you or is this inspired by a, a response to no, this, this post? No, this is from me. Mm. All right. Okay. I think Devil's advocate, I see. Okay. I think you two men are now dog owners. Yes. And you are now going to be siding with the Libvigians every time. But a Libvigian posted this. Exactly. And you guys are on their side. Oh my God, I'm Levi Maestro from Libvig. You guys don't realize it, but since you've become dog owners, you've become Libvigians in spirit. No. No. Yes. Steve cannot be no, Levi don't. Maestro and a Libvigian in spirit. <laughs> no. Okay, that's too much. I, if Levi up. Maestro lived in Toronto, he would 100% live uh, he'd, there. Uh, yeah, he'd, and he'd work for Vice. Absolutely. <laughs> Vice, by the way, is headquartered in Liberty Village. That's why I said it that. I, <laughs> I think we've come across another Levi Maestro situation. I don't think he so. He would ride a yoga ball no, man. to work. Uh, no, I'm a responsible goddamn dog owner. What's wrong with that? Now, wait. Like are you arguing bitch. that before I got a dog, I was like, ah, oh, take a shit there. It's cool. No, no you would have been like, yeah, they're right, but fuck that post. You don't need to throw up a sign as a civilian just putting up signs everywhere mm. being like, do you I would have left. I would have left. You would have left. But now as a dog owner, you're like, oh, yeah, we got to all pick up after our dogs. That's a funny post. Yeah, yeah. That's how you and Jesse might have a point there. I, th- I think it's... I might have laughed at it. I, I, was, th- I was far more flippant in my younger yeah. years. You know what? You know what? <laughs> Jesse might be right because before I got a dog, I wouldn't have had the opportunity to get all high and mighty about this and gone, I would have never <laughs> let my dog shit and not picked it up. Now, so, like, comments on the, there, are there right? comments? Yes, I think you're right. Are there comments on the post that say, I yeah. would never do that? Now, long trumpets with <laughs> flags on them <laughs> come down as I read this, and I go, and that would never happen with my dog. <laughs> How many people got sanctimonious on there? Uh, everyone. Right. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, someone's like, my favorite game to play in Toronto is counting how many pals of doggy surprises I can find. Is that your favorite game? I, I don't know. If that's a shitty game. That's a sh- <laughs> Fuck, I'm funny. Sorry. Anyways, I think you guys are going to go all doggo. Damn, maybe on. we are. Like, Because that's just a normal person who's like, hey, I'm going to, today, I'm going to wake up and I'm going to print this sign and type up this post Whoa, here's and a- staple it to a tree. Okay, so that... That's too much. I would never do... If you asked me if I would do that, I'd be like, no. No, but you see nothing wrong with someone doing that. Well... Which I think is far different I from when you didn't own a see, dog. See, here's what I like about it. I appreciate the fact that it's clever, because basically everybody in Liber- Liberty Village would claim to do yoga. So I think it's kind of funny that they would they would, kn- they would play on this... Uh, knowing on the, your audience. Yeah, mm-hmm. knowing your audience in your neighborhood would yeah. play on that. Demographics. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and would go to... I appreciate the fact that, that there's a bit of an art to that. It's a bit crude, but in terms of... You know, it's not deep comedy, but at least... <laughs> Uh, they at least know something about where they live. The you're, amount of time and effort you're putting into caring about other people picking up their dog poop is very sanctimonious and libidian. And you guys are siding with that you, you person. Know what, you know what I like? You know what I like to do? I think we should put up a post on our Reddit page 
and we should all post our own personal moments of being a Lividian. I mean, <laughs> fuck it. We from last episode, Jesse can just make a fake one. <laughs> like just just Photoshop that and put whatever you want on that sign. Maybe don't get sanctimonious about dog poop. And all of a sudden, now it's there and it's real. <laughs> you know what you should do? You should take that that post and you should Photoshop it and be like, "You guys, check out this other sign." And it's just dissing the first sign. And people are like, "Where is it?" Just see the rea- responses <laughs> so to funny. it. How hilarious would that be? I wouldn't do that to people. Oh my god, Why we got not? a video of someone ripping down the sign. Why wouldn't you do that? <laughs> it's too mean. It's too oh. cool. You know, you know what I got to see recently was uh, remember I told you about my neighbor last winter who <laughs> has a uh, big, very big sign on their lawn that says. <laughs> Uh, happy holidays and it's crossed out and it says Merry Christmas. We w- we took our dogs for a walk, Jesse, uh-huh. and, and Steve showed me the sign. Is so it still up? It's up. Not only is it still up, but I got I actually happened to be walking by as they were putting the sign up. There was an aspect to putting that sign up that I hadn't considered. This this fucking guy has to it, he's got two big wooden stakes that the sign is on that he's got to hammer into his lawn. Frozen lawn. <laughs> Frozen line. It's winter. Well, a little bit before it was frozen, but and and how? Whenever someone puts a sign like that up on their their their, their lawn, or yeah. the sign says "No tres- trespassing" in the front window, how clean do you think their garage was? How much shit do you think is on their lawn? Mm-hmm. Their basketball net's still out. <laughs> Still out. You know why? Because <laughs> why wouldn't it be? No, yeah. because they can't put it in their garage because it's filled with shit. Oh wow! I hadn't even thought of that. <laughs> there you go. It's the same. It's the family that's always yelling at their fucking kids, and you can hear it. They got shit all over the lawn. You know what I want to see? I want to see somebody do a mashup of a uh, Levi Maestro and LFR video. Oh, <laughs> Maestro knows and LFR. If, if somebody could like combine oh, the music and the lyrics yes. and the faces. Did I don't you see know. the "You Name It" challenge? Oh yeah, that was yes. so good. It was yeah, great. yeah. It's fantastic. Reddit page, check it out. Um, we gotta go. We gotta go quickly here, guys, because we still got the gift exchange, and we've got the press conference. Before we do the gift exchange, which we're gonna save for last, uh, press conference. Oh yes, you gotta give me a second to get up these questions. There's so the Steve Dangle press conference. Also, that's what's up in the vids. I just, I'm just happy that my neighbors are uh, fighting against the war on Christmas. Steve, this question's for you. <laughs> when you were at the game last, what was it, Tuesday? Monday? Monday. Monday. Did you start a thunderclap? I didn't. <gasps> oh, I How dare? I know. I didn't do one either, right. man. It's hard. You Get know some, what? I think pointers. on my own or with you guys, I would have done it, but Mrs. Dangle gets mortified. That's more reason to do it. You know what I did for the first time in my entire life? <laughs> That's more reason. She, it's funny, for such a fiery person, Adam, this might surprise you, for such a fiery person, she hates conflict, and she hates she hates embarrassing moments, and she hates conflict. Hmm. I for I would have f- thought she would have charged into any conflict because she's Scottish, and they, they're good. They're warriors. Diamond you know what? First. She has this line or no I can't I can't I can't you know what head first <laughs> okay so she'll she wait. hits a line okay. yeah head first um what do you okay you're at a restaurant mm-hmm. how's your food I'm, I'm the waiter how's your food it's good it's alright yeah, yeah. Well, well you would say good right you'd yeah, good. yeah it'd be like, it's good, yeah. yeah how's your food okay if your food's a little cold hey how's your food uh it's good it's good. And I, I give you the question mark and you'd be like, oh, why? And I'd be like, well, it was a little cold. Not always. Not always. I, I might go, oh, okay. <laughs> uh, we had like the worst meal we've ever had. And Miss, Mrs. Dangle was like, because I was like, I no, I'm place. saying something about, uh, I'm not going to say the name. It wasn't a chain. It was somewhere in Oshawa. Yeah, so let's and not. And we were, let's we not, wanted, we just not. wanted to try it out. Arby's. <laughs> not Arby's. No. It was Arby's. Fuck Arby's. <laughs> <laughs> The, the jag of what? restaurant chains. How is it still open? Who goes here? Anyway. Uh, and like, I was like, no, I'm saying something like this is ridiculous. It's the worst meal I've ever ordered in a restaurant. And she like, she's like, I- I'm, I'm going, I have to go. I'm going to go scrape off the car. She scraped off the car. That's how bad she didn't oh, want to wow. be a part of it. It was, yeah, it was during that big snowstorm. She was like, nope, uh, no, I'm not, I'm not, wow. I'm not being a part of it. So something like that she was thing mortified. the game would be just too much. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. In front of thousands of people. And like the thunderclaps start so awkwardly because yeah. you got to do them so far it apart. You, you know what we need to do? We need to go to the game just the four of us, yeah. with Mrs. Dangle and do it. Oh yeah, and just and just videotape her reaction to it. Just pretend to be drunk, yeah, and, and belligerent. Oh. Woo! 
pretend. Right. Oh, like, yeah. excuse oh, me. Just be. All right. Just, boy, next, a couple guys were playing to Adam. win on Monday. Yep. Second question is for Adam. A couple of episodes ago, you said you couldn't devote yourself to things you don't like. So how can you devote yourself to a Leafs-based podcast as a Habs fan? It's <laughs> <laughs> uh, a good question. Well, I'd rather answer that Well, because we only talk French. about how bad they are. That's true. <laughs> that's very true. Very, very true. Good point. Um, I hope the story is real. So yesterday, my girlfriend and I were Christmas shopping at Fake! The, at Sherway Garth. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, a good they start. Were Christmas shopping at Sherway Gardens. <laughs> Sherway Gardens. While walking past Lululemon. <laughs> wow, you walked past the GM of the Maple Leafs. That's amazing. We saw in front of us uh, Matthews, Marner, and Connor Brown. Oh. Freaking out, my girlfriend and I started contemplating whether or not to approach them and ask for a picture or autograph. Uh huh. Noticing that they were probably there to do last minute Christmas shopping before the road trip. We did not. However, that did not stop a mom asking them for one as she continuously stressed on how unfortunate it was that they lost the night before. Oh, To make no. things worse, when asking for a picture, it was only for Matthews and Marner leaving Connor Brown to awkwardly wait to the side. Oh. Would you guys have done the same thing? <laughs> hey, no. I've had that. I've been with Steve, and people have done that. No, like, They're would, like, would, they have, would you guys have done the same thing as, like, leave them alone? I leave them alone. Yeah. Leave them alone. Uh, Yeah. Well, I mean, and that's easy now, for me to, for sure. I think it's easy for me to say, and it's easy for us to say because we some people only get one shot. Yeah, mm-hmm. I um, no, back in the day, I think I still would have probably left them alone. <laughs> it's okay. So you were very considerate there, I, and I think you read the situation well. Uh, if you're f- like from Toronto or the GTA, yeah, leave them alone. If you're from out of town, mm-hmm. and this is like Haley's comet, you just by some miracle are around them. Go for it. Go for it and tell them. Tell them, hey, I'm I'm visiting from Halifax. It's so crazy. Most I get to people see you guys. don't have that type of charisma though. When they see a famous person, yeah, like, they, oh my God, they, they don't have the wherewithal to be yeah. like, oh my gosh, hey, I'm from out of town. Get starstruck. It happens. Just yeah. do it. it. Happens. Just I, do it. Um, yeah, I would say so for sure. And I think uh, I think you got to you got to read the situation that you're in. If someone's having dinner with someone too, don't approach them. No, don't. never a dinner. Um, never a dinner or lunch or breakfast. If you're eating, yeah. leave them alone. Eating um, is sacred. And, and and you know what? At the end of the day, they. I know it's cool and you got a picture, but it's cool and you got a picture. It really wasn't worth interrupting their meal. And I think I, I think you got to you got to take that into consideration. These guys are not on the clock. They deserve a break. I understand they make millions of dollars and that's part of their job. But give them their, give them their space. I'm not saying you know if, if it wasn't if it was January and they're just bumming around at the mall. Yeah, go up and say hi. Yeah. Um, nice that they read it that way. Good situation. I like that. Well done. Well played. Um, also, if you meet somebody in person. As I am now a TV guy and, and starting to understand, don't ever comment on their appearance. Ever. Or this happens lost. to me. It doesn't bother me. But I see it happen with women more. And I, I want to address it since we're on the conversation. Okay. What I find is that people in a bid to pay you a compliment will say, wow, you look so much better in person. Yeah. Oh, you look tired. You look taller in person. I get, wow. I get that a lot. You I are, didn't think you were so tall. Yeah, I didn't realize. And I'm only five. I'm five ten. <laughs> so I had somebody tell me I didn't realize you were so thin, and I'm not thin, <laughs> which means you thought I was fat. <laughs> so, and it's like you know what? How about it's just nice to meet you. Leave it at that. Yes, but maybe that's their say hi to Phil. Say hi to Phil and was not just, rude. No, but it was verbal diarrhea. You're right. You're you know. And what? there are just different types of verbal <sighs> diarrhea. You're right. You're right. I'll give you that. You're right. Jesse, before we get to the Christmas gift thing, I know there's an email. Uh, there is not. Oh, there's not. I thought there was an email that you wanted to get to. Okay, mm-hmm. fine. No. Nope. All right. We're not doing that. Uh, so, Steve, yesterday, okay. I told Adam that we had an email from a listener who was calling Adam out for being a dick. <gasps> and I went I believe this, it. and I was like, Adam, I started laughing because it was so ridiculous. And I was like, Adam, I'm going to bring this up tomorrow, and it's hilarious. And then Adam, I don't think Adam was going to take it too well. I oh, think I think it would have let us. I think I'd taken it well. Because here's no, the thing about Adam. Adam it works well. so fucking hard. Yeah. And he takes, for some reason, he takes the most shit. And all he wants is to be loved. <laughs> I, he I just think, wants to be everyone's pal. I think if I brought it up, it would have been very unnecessary. Just bring it, it up. It would, no, it would have been bad 
for the show just to be like, hey, look at this dick. Ha ha. He's making fun of somebody on the show. I, so now is is Adam, like, is this email going to be like. Are you sheltering me? Is Adam going to shelter like, me? Are, are you giving Adam an offensive zone start? <laughs> No, I'm I'm not putting he, him on the ice. Is he going to be opening? <laughs> That's oh, even worse. Is he going to be opening presents? Like, thanks for the fucking presents, guys. <laughs> Can you please just read the email? I don't have it anymore. I deleted it. What was the crux of it? I got what called did I out say? the other day for retweeting something that was blatantly stupid. It's true. You don't have to give it. Attention. Yeah, we don't have to give it attention. But now you've told him. Yeah, I told him yesterday, so he uh, knows it exists. So I'm yeah, just people, telling no, him. but he okay, doesn't fine. know the content. Yeah, no, stop. you're right. All no, right I'm fine. not giving this idiot attention. It's stupid. Okay. Oh, okay. All, All right, right. Fine. Yeah. All right. Fair. 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 And you know what? Not every conversation, uh, has not has every argument, had. do you have to attend, right? Exactly. No. So that was really a poor way to put that. Uh, that's how as bad I am at this job. Oh, I now, another thing. Okay. I threw up a thread on Reddit that says "best ofs." Please link whatever best of you'd like to feature in next episode. Okay. That wasn't very good English, but you understood what I was saying. Okay. So who wants to go first with the gift exchange? I'll be honest, I didn't have time to wrap your gifts uh, because uh, my neither. 18 jobs got in the way. Yeah. So I'm just going to hand them to you. Le- let me go. Actually, it doesn't matter. Okay. So last night I got a mysterious package from Mrs. Dangle after she said she was going out to run errands for half an hour and came back three hours later. She's fully, definitely having an affair. Um, so apparently this has to go with the happy holidays guy (laughs) oh my god it's the perfect cover and he's Levi Maestro's dad dun 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 (laughs) so how about we can do my stuff first and then her magical thing later okay yeah I can go first too you wanna go first go first alright I'll go first go first because I didn't get you guys a present I mean but you're handing us presents though but open it. So it's not it's a, present. a present. It's not open a present. It. I didn't get you guys anything. Jesse Maestro. I really want this to no, just be got wrapping it for paper. <laughs> or somebody gave it to us. I didn't get you guys shit this year because fuck you guys. <laughs> Let me see. What is this? Rip, 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 rip. Oh, oh what is dog this? sweaters. <laughs> I got. Oh, I think this will fit. I got my is... favorite parts of you, your dogs. Yes. <laughs> So fuck you guys. You know what? <laughs> we have been man. talking about getting Iggy a sweater. That's a great sweater too. These are great sweaters. This is such a nice one. I hope this is nice. Fit. No, last and this was... is nice because the the pink one we have. Every sweater I have for Bindi is like the girliest thing. And I get that my fiance wants to bake her up to. I think Bindi's Bindi's. She's been around. She was a street dog. Oh yeah. <laughs> she needs some toughness. Bind, a Bindi and Iggy were playing. And the size difference is hilarious. Iggy is is. literally twice her size. (laughs) But like every time it got a little too intense, like Bindi Street came out. And Iggy is a soft, raised dog. He doesn't know conflict. And she's like used to fighting for food. And she's like, get the fuck away from me. (laughs) And Iggy's like, I'm trying to be your friend. And then they eventually yeah. made up. They, I think what it was is Thank she's developing you. trust with oh, with uh, with Iggy. And as soon as they kind of, she realized that he wasn't going to attack her. She she was jacked as hell to be playing with him. So get the fuck away from me, okay, we're friends. Anyway, so I'm sorry I didn't get you guys anything. That's okay. But I got. I'm happy. Oh, I yeah. get it for the dogs. He said our fav- the favorite parts of us, which yeah. is nice. Oh. That means Jesse likes us on some level. Oh. It's a present that's not I for like you because you have dogs. <laughs> well, I'll take you, it, sir. I'll oh, take thank it. You. Steve, that's do you want to go next or should I? Sure, I'll go next. Go ahead. Why not? Okay. Uh, mm, no. Wait. Whatever you want. Yes, okay. No, I will. I will go. And then save Mrs. Dangles. Yes. Yes. Um, it's two parts. I got you both two things. Okay. Okay. Uh-huh. I will give, I'll, I will give one to Adam first. Now, this one's, this one was so difficult. Why? Adam's very difficult to shop for. Because all SL and I kept thinking, all Mrs. Dangle and I kept thinking was, Adam's like, I'm just, I have too much shit. Yeah, I don't I have, want stuff. I have too much mm-hmm. stuff. So what do you get? What do you get the guy who has too much shit? So we came up with this. It's a hat. Happy holidays. Actually, it's Merry Christmas. Oh, it says you're happy right. holidays. I'm, I'm, on sorry, there. I'm sorry. How dare you? Jesus. And I love that you have the uh the um uh, the peanuts wrapping paper, peanuts, uh Charlie Brown Christmas, my favorite. Yeah. It's my favorite Christmas. Also, peanuts, delicious as food. Also, yeah. <laughs> this is so great. this is what you get the guy who just he has too much shit. The poo emoji. We got Woo! him a sh- no, not a not a poo emoji, a shit emoji. Is that because I'm a shithead? No, because now you just have more shit in your house. Ah, uh, creative. <laughs> This, that's Mrs. Wow. Dangle. Wow. That's, that's Mrs. Mrs. Dangle. Mrs. Dangle, everybody. Hold on. Mrs. I will Dangle. Her. Uh, Jesse got you uh, something a little different. Okay. 
Uh, it's it's two things actually. Okay, so okay. it's an Oshawa Generals T-shirt. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Did you definitely I, maybe get that for free? I definitely maybe did. Adam. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely maybe did. <laughs> I got it for free, and I thought, I, why? Why should I only get the free things? Right. So, uh, no, and I do got to look up one other thing before I give this next one to Jesse, because I think you'll, you'll find it very humorous. Okay. All right. So I was walking through uh, the Oshawa Town Center, as mm-hmm. one does when one lives in Oshawa, and uh, I was I was looking for wonderful things to get my friends, and I thought, what what can I get them? What can I get them? And I came across some Oshawa Generals things, and I was like, okay. oh. Oh, okay. What would the guys like? What what player would the guys like? And and I thought about maybe maybe getting something um maybe getting something of Daniil Antropov's, you know, son of Nick Antropov's. M- maybe Sorelli, mm-hmm. team captain. Walk on, great story. Instead, so I found out earlier this episode. Uh I got an autographed puck of one of the generals. And, and I thought it was perfect for a Christmas present. Jesse, can you read that guy's name? Saron Noel. His name is Noel. <laughs> wow. So weird. here's an autograph oh Saron God. Noel puck. <laughs> and he wrote Noel on it. He sure did. Because it's Christmas, and that's his that, name. I like that. <laughs> now, wow. uh, this is for the both of you. It's a card. Do you want to read it, Jesse, or should I? Go ahead. Okay. This is for the both of you. Are we allowed to read this out loud? I think so. I'm going to put this right what next it. to my signed Brendan Shanahan puck. Whoa! And they're going to be on the same level. <laughs> now, now, you know what's great, Jesse, is that t-shirt uh, should come in handy uh, when you guys come with me to an Oshawa oh! Generals game! Oh my god, we all... Wow. I, got a, I got a six pack of tickets, so we, oh, could, nice. we could go the three of us to two games, yeah. or we could bring folks, or... Screw other what. people, let's go to two games. Yeah, let's just go uh, to Alright, there you go, so there it is. <laughs> oh my god, and then we can... Now uh, Jesse's gotta come out and the, record breaking, two t- two t- and there's not that many games left in the season, by the way. Yeah, okay, so we gotta get out there soon, and... I think there's like 14 left. All right, 14 so we home, so, home games. Okay. So, uh, yeah. and, then, and then we'll go to your house afterwards, Steve, and Jesse can get online and go fight me at Child Bitch. Yeah, there you uh, go. And we can finally start his YouTube series. This is great. Yeah, so, Here, so I'm going to give amazing. this back to you because it makes more sense that you hang on to them. Oh, yeah, right? okay, sure. Um, yeah, and the so card it's, is signed it's by Flex all the pack tickets. They're tickets for whatever games we want. So we can just pick and choose. Yes. Nice. Excellent. So I was walking around Oshawa Town Center and they cool. were giving out this package mm-hmm. and the autograph puck and the shirt came in the package. Mm-hmm. And so I'm like, wow. And I asked Jesse yesterday, I go, what item of clothing uh, yeah. <laughs> would, would you be most likely to wear? And he's like, oh, like a hoodie or a crew neck. And I'm like, mm, it's not in the yeah, budget there, Jesse. You know what? I'll just give him the T-shirt. <laughs> 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 so oh, those gosh. are no, those are none of the things that I, <laughs> that I had in mind. Where's the card? Or I guess Do you, you guys hold on to oh, the yeah. card. I just don't want to hurt the tickets. All right. That's all. Gentlemen, my turn. <sighs> yes, Adam. Uh, first one is for Steve, and it is not for me. It's not from you. It is from uh, producer Andy of Breakfast Television fame, oh. uh, who has started listening to this show as okay. one of his shows that he listens to, and uh, is a ardent Leaf fan. Oh yeah, there's the schedule right there. Um, and he collected this from City TV back in the day from one of the sportscasters there. His name is Hugh Burl, who I know you know. Yes. And Hugh somehow came across this and gave it to Andy, so Andy would like to pass it on to you, so this is Merry Christmas from Andy. Oh my goodness. A Whoa. Toronto Maple Leafs construction helmet. Oh, wow. Which is, by the way, legit, apparently. This is what a legitimate mean? NHL product. I don't know how. Like they sold it. They the sold NHL. it. Wow. I'm going to so old. Put it Will on. It fit my head? Will it? It fits his head. A little bit. Sort of. Yeah. You can unscrew. Yeah, you probably know, can make see. it bigger. Yeah, the back, yeah. There you go. How do you do it? Left. Lefty Lucy. But they both just click. You know what? I'm not going to hurt this. I'll figure it out at home. <laughs> And I'm just going to put it on like this. That's right. This is sick. Pretty sweet, huh? Thank you, Hugh, Andy. And when you put your your construction hat on, you go to work like the Leafs do every night. I'm going to wear this on the DVP on the way home. There I'm you go. That's a good idea. And this is your actual gift, my friend. A couple things in here. And don't oh. worry, there's gift receipts if you hate them. <laughs> if I hate them, okay. I can sort of say that. I always hate when people say that in the gift. It's like, that means I'm probably not going to like it. <laughs> But I don't actually think. <laughs> oh, this, is <laughs> this is a two-parter. 
Ooh, Is that okay. the sweater you're currently wearing, Steve? No. Open up the sweater. It's even better. Okay, so we got leaf socks. We got some leaf socks. Very cool. Very Which cool. I think I socks. Need, I good socks. socks. Leaf yeah. socks. Those are good socks too, by the way. Oh, but this is not just a. It's a leaf. Oh, leaf that was the yes. best version. <laughs> That's nice. Which oh, is even yes. right, even worse. <laughs> <laughs> you should wear the vest over, over the, the sweater. Yes, with the helmet yeah. and your socks. Can you do your next video like that? With with the vest over my sweater. Oh, the vest over your sweater, yes. And then a jersey underneath. <laughs> it's so hot. In oh sweater. my god! Look at this. <laughs> that just looks so ridiculous. How's this, everybody? <laughs> so it's a maple leaf sweater vest and his hat. What do you All think? All right. All right. Oh, I think it's great. I fucking <laughs> Jesse. I didn't know what to get you this year, so I got you this, okay. and I hope I hope that it it, it measures. What is this? It is, is it meat? It is not meat. It is an M&M meat shop's bag, but it is not meat. <laughs> leaf it's socks? Leaf socks. Chicken tenders. <laughs> Always need socks. We got you some leaf socks. I know. Ran. Also, Jesse has the coolest socks in the world, so. I'm at, I, I'm, I wish you got him, like, hors d'oeuvres <laughs> from m and <M&M's. laughs> hey, hey, Here's spring rolls. Adam, Adam actually got me the, cr- the sweater instead of the t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Oh fuck, St. Pat's! Oh Holy fuck! Shit. And I hope that fits you, but I've seen you in stuff like that all the time, so I thought that's got to that's got to work for him. It's a large, and I'm usually an XL. Oh so. god, I hope it works. If not, there are gift receipts. Yeah, you're a confusing guy to shop for yeah. size wise because your li- limbs are long. Yes, I hope this fits. God, please fit. But you are slender and fit. Eh. Eh. Oh, does it work? Is it too small? Well, I'm wearing a sweater underneath. It's perfect. Oh. Thank goodness. It looked big. I was like, yeah, that fits you great, man. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, it even fits your long ass arms. That's amazing. <laughs> Fantastic. That's a nice sweater. Thank you, so. Adam. This no, is so nice. Jacket. No problem. No problem. I want a nice vest. Thank you. I hope you quality. see my vest. See my vest. Oh, my goodness. That is of the highest it is quality. <laughs> You know, perhaps you could wear a t-shirt underneath it. <laughs> <laughs> Red and black go together, I understand. It's a black St. Pat's crew neck sweater. Mm-hmm. Mm, and not well, correct it's, it's turtle like red black thingy. got a little bit of green on the crest it's mm-hmm. very festive anyway yeah very crestive crest oh jeez <laughs> it's a jacket I Brenda cut that joke oh, okay oh, oh, present <laughs> yeah and I have no idea what it is or actually I don't even know who it's from so, or who it's for no what if it's not even for the show it's just a present for Steve and Steve just brought it what if it's for my fiance have we, have we figured that one out oh it is for Jesse and I just check it out Okay, there's one, two... Both are Star Wars rapping. Two, Adam love Bindi, and then two, Steve love Iggy, and two, Jesse apparently go fuck yourself, because it's just <laughs> me and Adam. Wow, all right. Okay. All right, I'll open it. Here, you get the hard hat. Do we, we open it now, right? right? That's all, yeah, Do we open it now? Go ahead. I guess. All right, did she tell you? Oh, yeah, and she said, make sure this is on the uh, camera. Oh, it looks like the oh, battery's running make out. It. Okay. All right, let's okay. do it quickly. Let's do it. Oh no, it's another box. Damn it. Is it? Mine's oh, not. Oh, oh my god. What the hell is this? It's a uh, It's a picture of <laughs> Possum Dog Dad. Does it say possum as Iggy. in possum? Uh, and it's a picture of, of us of... and our dogs. So, uh, so describe it for the listening it's, audience. Okay, so it Steve threw this up on his Instagram. It is a picture of he and I at Jesse's party where it says it's lit with the balloons and our two dogs. Aww. That is the it's cutest thing. It's a possum dog dad on the back. Because I am, and now... Now you gotta put it on. I gotta put it on. <laughs> I always hated that, by the way, when you got presents and your mom would be like, Put it on! Yeah. Try it, it on! It and I'd be like, no, I want to open other presents. And no matter how much it doesn't fit, they're like, it fits! It doesn't fit, you'll never wear it. Oh my goodness, I'm so warm. Wow. I feel, you know I what, feel good. You know what I feel like? A possum dog dad. Do we, should we wear this to our next talking night in cinema? <laughs> no. I think I should wear this to like, there's like a sports net annual meeting coming up. I think I'm going to oh, wear it. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Is Jerry going to be there? Is Don going to see you in your uh, Probably dad? not. No. No, there's like a big one at the beginning of the season that mm. he comes to sometimes, but I don't think he's got to go to any others. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> gentlemen. I want to wish you both a Merry Christmas. Success. Yeah. And we will have two more episodes next week, and then we're going to take a week hiatus. Help Jesse out on our Reddit page. What bits did you love this year that you want to hear back in... No, it's not. Is it... It's next week's our best ofs. Is next week... No, no, no. It's the week after is our best ofs. No, next week's the best ofs. When's, when's our next show, guys? Next week. 
All right. Yeah, all it's right. next week. And all then right. it's the first week of January we're taking off. It's after all New right. Year's. If that's how you want to do it. It's so what we previously discussed, but... We're doing shows next week? Yes. I, yeah. I had planned on that. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah. All yeah. right. I'm glad we got that figured out. I'm just confused. That's what I thought. Yeah. yeah. That's what I... Th- so Steve thought that and I thought do that. Do we all agree and we yes. just don't realize it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. okay, so we're good. good. So next week we're going to do a couple <laughs> more shows and then we're going to take the first week off of the new year. And don't be mad because you know what? You'll have best stuffs and we will not take another show off until July. Oh my God, I'm so, so hot. <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas, everybody! Merry Christmas! Happy New Year! No, happy holidays! Follow the guys on Twitter at Steve underscore Dangle at Adam W-Y-L-D-E and at Jesse Blake. The Steve Dangle Podcast. Brought to you by Panago Pizza. Order at panago.com and stuff your face with deliciousness.